have just uh, postponed this third game of the World Series. The, uh, the quake was felt here. In fact, there was a uh, sort of a stunned, awed silence as the, uh, as the, the shake uh, rolled through the area. Uh, there is a large part of the area right around here that is without power, uh, including, of course, this stadium where the third game of the World Series was to take place. But without lights, without power, uh, without television, for that matter, uh, the game has been canceled. The people are filing out of the stadium. Uh, it's, uh, it certainly is a scene of calm, though uh, uh, in some cases it's almost festive. This, uh, this after, after all, is a great source of excitement, above, uh, uh, among other things. Thank you very much, David Dow. Uh, in California, this is CBS News live coverage of the earthquake, uh, a strong earthquake described by wire services and some law enforcement people as a major earthquake that rocked Northern California this evening. Now, it's reported by Associated Press and by our affiliate uh, KPIX in San Francisco that some buildings may have collapsed. Now, that comes from police officer D. Collins. Some buildings may have collapsed. Let's pause right here and say, we, won't, we can't emphasize enough, we don't feel, that we're in the early stages of this story. We know from such things as hurricanes, previous earthquakes, natural disasters of all kinds, that a lot of false and unconfirmed reports will make the rounds, rumors will make the rounds. It's time to remind ourselves that in this kind of situation, uh, take a deep breath, say to ourselves, what do we know? What do we actually know? Now, in that spirit, we're going to pass along to you what we know. Uh, there are reports of some injuries at Candlestick Park, where fans were waiting for the World Series to begin. We're told that tonight's scheduled World Series game between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland Athletics has uh, been canceled. The stadium, Candlestick Park, was evacuated. The quake lasted about 15 seconds. Now, let's don't talk about the aftershock that has also been reported but not yet confirmed. The quake itself is said to have lasted about 15 seconds. And according to seismologists at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, it did measure 6.5 on the Richter scale. This uh, was a preliminary reading, and it was from the Alaska warning system. Now, the experts at uh, Caltech are continuing to check to see exactly what it was on the Richter scale. Uh, keep in mind that the, with the Richter scale, that uh, a quake that would be, say, 6.5 would be 10 times stronger than a quake that was 5.5. We believe this one was 6.5. If it turns out to have been 6.5 on the Richter scale, it would indeed be a major strong earthquake, but not in the category of the original, uh, let's say original, the world famous San Francisco uh, earthquake in 1906. Uh, that 1906 San Francisco uh, earthquake which resulted in 503 deaths, was 8.3 on the Richter scale, according to one calculation. Some say it registered actually more than nine. But nonetheless, this earthquake is believed to be at least in the range of 6.5 uh, on the Richter scale. The center of the earthquake is believed to have been the one tonight, 10 miles north of Santa Cruz on the San Andres Fault. That's uh, the center of the earthquake is believed to have been 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, California. Uh, regardless of how much damage it turns out to have caused, whether it's a lot or not so much, given that it's in the range of a 6.5 Richter scale earthquake, that is believed to be the area where it uh, was centered. Uh, the National Earthquake Information Center in Colorado, uh, we have a person now standing by, at, it's Bruce Pesgrave, if I've mispronounced your name, Mr. Pesgrave, please forgive me, from the National Earthquake Information Center in Colorado. Mr. Pesgrave, what do we know? Okay, uh, we located a strong earthquake at 5.04 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Preliminary magnitude that we get is 6.9 on the Richter scale. I say that, that makes it a strong earthquake. And we have a preliminary location uh, south of San Francisco in, in the South Bay area. Our location is still, still very preliminary. Now, you say uh, 6.9 on the Richter scale, Mr. Pesgrave. Is that a confirmed 6.9, or is that a preliminary estimate? Well, that, that's still preliminary, but uh, that's, that's an average of four stations, so we, we feel pretty confident in that magnitude. Uh, with that in mind, could you put that in perspective for us? Uh, when was the last earthquake in this country along that uh, same Richter scale margin? Uh, there have been quakes 
that size in in the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, but of course that's a very unpopulated or relatively unpopulated area. So, would you uh, expect from this there to this, be uh, this is, damage? Uh, this this quake is uh, approximately the same magnitude as the Spitak earthquake in Armenia. This this earthquake is of, of roughly the same magnitude. We're talking now about the Richter scale, not necessarily That's right. damage or, or casualties. Of That's roughly right. The same in terms of the one in Armenia. Yes. In terms of magnitude, it's it's uh, nearly the same. damage is to Highway 101, which is the main north-south freeway. We have reports that the freeway is broken up and sections of the elevated highway have collapsed. We have reports of gas leaking in San Francisco. Emergency vehicles are out. And uh, we are continuing to collect information. We have another report here. The San Jose Airport. Which is for San Francisco bound traffic. And there's possible cars in the water. At this time, the Golden Gate Bridge is still open. What's the situation here as far as uh, 60,000 fans are canceled? There's a possible cancellation of the game at this time. Thanks. All right, there's a uh, further report on our Bay Bridge story. Uh, many of those television stations which we are getting our reports through are unable to broadcast because uh, major uh, portions of power out in certain portions of the city. We did get some pictures earlier from KTVU in Oakland, California. So some parts of the city are unaffected by this quake or affected in a much more minor way. What I was going to say about the San Jose Airport is uh, that they're telling, that, telling us that all their runways are open, if that matters to you. Again, uh, in relation to the 1906 quake, which is the major San Francisco earthquake, which registered over eight. Everybody can leave in a graceful fashion. Please leave. The game has been postponed. There'll be no baseball tonight. Thank you. I'll get that out to the truck right now and put it on the air. All right. We're still out at the stadium picking up reaction from there. Game three of the World Series has been canceled. See the players and their wives leaving. This is unedited tape. Uh, we are watching it right out of the camera at the same time you are. These are the pictures that were captured by photographers out at the park just moments ago. They're being fed to us by satellite. We're just putting them right on the air so as not to miss any part of the story. Didn't look real promising. Oh, it'll be a horrible way to uh, get your first start. Well, the, the start's not as important as something like this. What so. went through your mind? I mean, can you, can you describe it? I was what happened with your teammates? I was sitting on a bench, and all of a sudden, I saw the ground shaking, and I made a mad dash to the middle of the field. And, uh, some guys said they were out here running, getting loose, and about knocked him over. It was just uh, freaky. Like everybody else in this place, did you get the uh, oh, yeah, adrenaline oh, yeah. shakes, and are they still? Uh, uh, I'm sure. It's still, you know, it's still a little spooky, but... Uh, they can't play this game, huh? No, I don't see it. I don't see that happening. No, they just said... The commissioner just said no. All right, that game three of the World Series has been canceled. We heard one report that they might continue the series only in Oakland. We have another report that the bridges in the uh, Bay Area have been closed. That's going to cause an incredible crunch in the Bay Area tonight. Some of these folks. There has been a power failure. Therefore, the game will be postponed. We ask that you hold on to your tickets. Green checks will be honored. As you leave in an orderly fashion, please turn your radios on to KNBR 68 or KGO 81. Rain checks will be honored. We have a power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you leave in an orderly fashion. Thank you. That's the scene at Candlestick Park as the fans learned of the cancellation of the game. We were talking about the uh, bridges in the San Francisco area closed. Uh, we don't know if all of them have been closed. Do we know that? San Rafael Bridge also? All right. The report is, and it's unconfirmed, that all bridges in the Bay Area have been closed. Now, if you're familiar with the Bay Area, you know you can't get from place to place to place without those bridges. That would include the Golden Gate, San Rafael Bridge, the Bay Bridge, uh, which, of course, as uh, we have been reporting, is... Uh, under major stress tonight. It has collapsed in part, part of the upper tier. Last year in LA, it was pretty bad, but uh, this is, uh, I guess you would call it more. Part of the upper tier uh, has collapsed under the lower tier. What we have are reports from television crews 
flying over the Bay Bridge and the reports of the uh, traffic caught in that uh, tangle of steel and bodies in the water. We are continuing to follow this story. We're collecting tape. We're collecting information. We'll take a break, and this CNN special report on the quake in San Francisco will continue in just a moment. Go sitting at the head of the peninsula. Oakland would be uh, just to the right of San Francisco across the bay. And uh, again, we here in the truck do not have uh, any further information in terms of magnitude and the exact epicenter. There are some fires, obviously, in uh, the city of San Francisco, again, as we take a look at that, uh, that appears to be what uh, would be the Marina District, uh, not far from Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, at 5.04 Pacific time, we understand was when the earthquake occurred. And uh, we at that point, of course, were, were coming on the air getting ready to begin our telecast of the third game of the World Series. And again at Candlestick Park, there was no panic. Uh, Californians uh, sort of react with uh, wryness, I suppose, and uh, an irony, and you, you kind of give each other a knowing shrug, hey, we know what's happened, and then, as I say, the reality has really begun to sunk in. Meanwhile, Joe Morgan was down on the field. We were preparing to lead to a Joe Morgan interview. Next to Joe was Willie Mays, and uh, Tim McCarver and I and Jim Palmer were in the, the booth, and there it was at that particular point, and as we say, uh, or as we said before in the in the booth, here was here was us. Uh, here, here we were at that uh, particular point. My grammar is not particularly terrific at this point, but I think you'll all understand. Well, uh, I was watching, thinking that they were just replaying a tape of what happened, but clearly what uh, what has been happening all evening long has just happened again. You heard Al Michaels. There have been electrical uh, breakups all evening long. The key part of the story, as by now I'm sure you will have gathered, is that there has been a rather major earthquake in San Francisco, ranging somewhere between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale. You see one of the fires that uh, we assume has been caused by the tremor uh, one of my colleagues here, our political director, Hal Bruno, who is also a volunteer fireman, tells me that what frequently happens is that these fires are a consequence of ruptured gas lines. So there you see a fire blazing with what I believe is the Golden Gate Bridge directly behind, but it is the other bridge, the Bay Bridge, that Al Michael was talking about just a moment ago, uh, where a 30 to 50 foot, a foot span of the upper level has collapsed onto the lower level. And of course, among the other things that will have happened this evening, as all the fans from Oakland who came over to the San Francisco side to see the third game of the World Series, which parenthetically has of course been canceled now by the commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, uh, all those people somehow have to get back to Oakland. They won't be going back over the Bay Bridge. Uh, as you have seen uh, over the course of the past few minutes, and there you see a span of highway that has also collapsed. No indication, uh, parenthetically, of whether there have been any injuries or fatalities. Um, you can tell uh, an, an earthquake uh, is such a random thing. You see people there standing around uh, in an almost joking fashion. Uh, I guess relief as much as anything else, uh, but only a few miles and in some instances even a few hundred yards away, there may be people who have been badly injured by that same quake. And what we're looking at there is, I believe, a span, that segment that I was telling you about, the cantilevered segment of the Bay Bridge that Al Michaels was talking about a few moments ago, it collapsed, and because it collapsed, the upper level collapsed onto the lower level, clearly that bridge can no longer be used to connect San Francisco with Oakland. So the folks who went to see the game in San Francisco today won't be able to go back via the bridge, and there have been other reports, unconfirmed as yet, that uh, BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, that is the uh, uh, partially underground subway uh, segment, that there has been at least one train that has been stalled in one of those tunnels. So I suspect they may be very, very cautious now in terms of allowing more passengers in there. Now, a couple of my colleagues, uh, Bruce Hall and Mark Nelson, are standing by by phone. Uh, Mark, you're still out, uh, I gather, at the ballpark. Anything new that you can tell us from out there? Uh, Ted, can you hear me, Ted? 
Uh, we, we hear you rather faintly, and if, if we don't hear you any more clearly than that, go ahead, Mark Nelson. Can you hear me? Mark Nelson? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, there, there's um, power failures again in various parts of the, of the park area that I'm near. People are filing out. It, it, it appears to be very orderly. There are buses around. People are, are loading buses, and they're... Um, they're leaving the, the park area. Um, it appears to me most of the television uh, trailers and foreign broadcast trailers that are around here um, have all lost power as well. Um, from what I can see, there appears to be no lights on the towers inside the stadium. That's about all I can tell you right now, Ted. Uh, Mark, since you are living in San Francisco, maybe you can fill in what I was trying to explain to our viewers a moment ago, and that is how do the people who are now on the San Francisco side of the bay, how do they get over to the Oakland side, since clearly they cannot take the Bay Bridge? Well, Ted, I don't live in San Francisco. I live in Los Angeles, and I'm uh, interested to find that out myself. All right. Well, how about Bruce Hall? Bruce, you're, you're standing by also on the phone. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the normal alternate route would probably be the San Mateo Bridge, which is the bridge just south of the Bay Bridge, but that has been closed for inspection, according to KGO. They're, they are inspecting it for damage. There's not known damage as of a few minutes ago. But that bridge has been closed, which leaves the Dunbarton Bridge, which is a very small bridge, uh, several miles farther south it takes off from Palo Alto and uh, otherwise you'd have to drive either the Golden Gate Bridge and the Richmond San Rafael Bridge or through San Jose and around and up uh, the other shore but part of 880 which is the road that would come up from San Jose to Oakland has collapsed I think it's nearer the Bay Bridge but I'm not sure I think that may have been the, the part of the freeway that you showed earlier that it collapsed. Bruce, I'll tell you what, maybe you could just fill us in a little bit on uh, what you know in terms of injuries, possibly even fatalities and damage. We have seen some aerial video of what looked to be some rather serious fires. Do you have any idea of how widespread they are uh, and of whether there have been any casualties? No, I'm sorry, I don't. All right. We're going to go back now to Al Michaels, who is still standing by um, at uh, Candlestick Park. Uh, Al, I assume that you're looking at the same video that I'm seeing right now, which is a terrible fire somewhere uh, in San Francisco. Do you know the area well enough to be able to tell us where that is? Ted, I'm not certain that I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing, but I do see a fire. I know there is a fire in what would be uh, the Marina District or very close to it. It's not far from Fisherman's Wharf. It would be in the uh, the northern section of the city. It appeared to me uh, maybe a half a mile in from, from San Francisco Bay, and that appears to be the most serious of the fires that uh, I'm able to see at this particular point. All right, before you start to brief us all on, on what is happening there right now, let me just point out that President Bush was attending a dinner for Republican governors in Washington this evening when he learned about the earthquake in California. The president told reporters that about an hour from now, the Secretary of Transportation, Skinner, will go to California to make a first hand inspection of the damage. The president also said that uh, officials of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, are being called to the White House tonight to start mapping out assistance plans. Just a few miles to the south of you there, Al, at San Francisco Airport, you should know the airport has been closed. Uh, and I don't know whether that's just while they are waiting to see if there are any more aftershocks or whether they need to, uh, whether they need to conduct an inspection there. But uh, fill us in on the scene now at Candlestick, would you? Well, right now everybody appears to be safe and uh, everybody evacuated. It was a, a, a most curious sort of reaction. I, I don't know if uh, we had communication before, Ted. I could not hear you, but... You know, I have lived in this state for 20 years and in this area for 12, so those of us who uh, have experience living through these things knew exactly what it was. Uh, when it stops, uh, there's a tremendous sense of relief. There's a, a wryness and irony and all of that, and you sort of shrug your shoulders and you say, It's really process uh, beginning to settle in about 20 minutes later of what might have been, and I can't tell you how fortunate we were. Upgraded standards in regard to safety for the prevention of earthquakes. Broadcast position is in that mezzanine. I had the sense just for a second or two that we were going backwards and out, and that we were going to go down into the lower deck and the upper. Uh, tell you that uh, uh, it's a, it's been a terrible tragedy, obviously. And 
Uh, obviously, the uh, the base portion of that has collapsed, and we don't know in, uh, the casualties, but uh, we were very, very lucky at Candlestick Park that the epicenter was not that close to this ballpark, which is uh, 31 years old. Actually, Al, the, the epicenter, uh, I've just been handed a piece of wire copy, the epicenter was about 50 in Francisco. So, uh, presumably, as we, uh, as we go on into the evening, we'll be getting reports of what's been happening closer to the epicenter, but obviously right now, uh, the focus of attention has been and continues to be the immediate Bay Area, San Francisco, and the area right around Candlestick Park. We heard um, Commissioner of Baseball Faye Vincent telling Gary Thorne before uh, that the game uh, obviously was canceled for tonight, and he'll be making a decision later on as to whether or not uh, the third game of the World Series can be played there at Candlestick Park. Uh, I, I don't expect you to crystal ball it, Al, but just on the basis of what we have seen here this evening, can you imagine that they can conduct those kinds of inspections in the next 24 hours and have everybody back there in that park tomorrow night? Well, again, drawing on the fact that I've lived here all of these years, yes, they've been able to do those things. I think, you know, you've got other problems here. You've got uh, the psyche of this entire area uh, incredibly affected by this. You're going to have uh, huge, huge traffic jams all over the Bay Area. I mean, it's obvious that the extent of the damage to the collapsed section of the Bay Bridge is sufficient that that bridge is going to be closed for uh, who knows how long. I understand, like I heard an earlier report, Ted, when they were linking me with you, that the San Mateo Bridge uh, is also being closed at least for inspection and so what you would have to do to get from uh, San Francisco to Oakland would be to uh, either drive down to the Dumbarton Bridge which connects Menlo Park and Fremont a very small bridge or drive all the way to San Jose and come back up or uh, proceed to the far North Bay and come back down over the Golden Gate Bridge so uh, you know obviously this is one of the things uh, that people are thinking about in this area the continuation of this World Series uh, when it will take place but I think uh, uppermost in, in most people's minds in this region right now uh, are things of another nature. No, you're exactly right. And I should point out that this earthquake, uh, and, and perhaps we should just tell those people who are tuning in now for the first time and who perhaps thought they were going to catch this game in the third or fourth innings, the, the third game of the World Series has been canceled. What you are looking at right now uh, is the reason why. There has been an earthquake in San Francisco. You're looking at a piece of videotape now uh, of some cars that were trapped when the upper section of the Bay Bridge collapsed onto the lower section of the Bay Bridge. That is the bridge that connects Oakland with San Francisco. The Ted, quake... I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you Al. hear me uh, right now? Because uh, just to point something out in case it has not been, this bridge is a double-decker bridge. It is one way from east to west in the direction we are looking right now. In other words, that car was heading from Oakland into San Francisco. And then there is a, the uh, section underneath, which is one way going from uh, San Francisco to Oakland. So I don't have to tell you that in the best of times, that is an incredibly heavily traveled bridge, not just during rush hour, but uh, at, at several points during the day. And uh, you can see in that shot, if you are seeing the same thing I am, Ted, the panoramic shot of San Francisco, that fire appears to be, as I say, in the Pacific Heights or Marina District. You saw the Golden Gate Bridge, and we've not heard any reports in regard to structural damage there, which links Marin County in San Francisco. Panning now, you f Fisherman's Wharf would be at the uh, shoreline there. Uh, there's downtown San Francisco. There is the main portion of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. That is not the portion uh, at which the collapse has taken place. Yerba Buena Island and Treasure Island is in the middle. And then there is that cantilevered portion and that is where the uh, collapse of the Bay Bridge has taken place, Ted. Now, uh, the fires, we just saw one of the fires over there on the San Francisco side. I should point out that fires have also been reported in Berkeley and in Oakland. So this is clearly an earthquake that has made its effects felt uh, for many, many miles all around. As I mentioned a few moments ago to you, Al, the epicenter is about 50 miles south of San Francisco, but clearly the attention of the world this evening has been focused on San Francisco, and as we get more information uh, later on, our colleague Peter Jennings is sitting up in New York with our San Francisco Bureau Chief, Ken Kashiwahara. Maybe the two of them can fill us in a little bit. And again, one of the things, the, the, the subway system, Peter, maybe you could ask Ken, uh, that BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, how is that going to be affected by this? Well, Ted, uh, by the way, first of all, you and Al Michaels particularly have done a superb job of, we've been listening to you here for half an hour. 
Bart has already been evacuated in some places, Ken. Some people got trapped in tunnels and have moved out. But other than that, it's the same story there. It's been fairly orderly, hasn't it? I think so. Uh, in any kind of an earthquake like this, they would shut down Bart uh, protectively and then simply inspect. Um, I haven't heard any reports of any damage on the BART system. There could have been, but, but the stopping of the system is, is, is routine in any event like this. This is uh, something that most Californians uh, living in your neck of the woods expect to happen at some point. You've had about 4,000 of these earthquakes in the last couple of years of a much minor nature. More minor. Well, expecting, I, I'd say this is something we've all feared, yes, and this is the, the, the worst time of the day it could possibly have happened. This is what earthquake officials had, had, had feared the most. That is, an earthquake happening in the middle of rush hour with uh, thousands thousands and thousands of cars on highways. So yeah, we live with that fear. And you also live, as we go back and have a look at some of these aerials that we've been able to see of San Francisco, not much point, I think, in looking at us when we can be looking at San Francisco. Um, do you also have the sense, as citizens of San Francisco, that it's going to be happy and that you're going to behave in a certain way? Um, no, I think there's a fear about that, too. Um, we, we've all been told what to do when earthquakes hit, what to expect, and how to behave. But I, I suppose there's always that feeling in the back of our minds that we won't really behave that way. The worst, the worst uh, thing that the officials fear is panic among, among the population. There's so many earthquakes because this is where the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate meet. And I was looking as we were listening to Ted and Al Michaels talk, and as we look again at the Oakland Bay Bridge, that in the three years since the middle of 1986, you've had just over 4,400 earthquakes of some nature. You must never get used to it. Well, but, but don't forget, some of those earthquakes are either further away than this one was, or they are, are um, not as strong, and therefore we don't feel them as much. Uh, yes, we, we have gotten used to feeling the rolling motions, but, but certainly nothing like this. We've had tremendous uh, benefit from having Al Michael, Michael there as well, who grew up, and that's the Marina District of San Francisco, which, as Al has pointed out on a couple of occasions, is not far from Fisherman's Wharf for visitors to California. There's no hard evidence yet that that fire actually began as a result of the earthquake. The epicenter of which you've probably heard already was about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz and 50 miles south of San Francisco. But the information beyond the basics, Ken, has been fairly slow to come in. How well equipped both mentally and physically are the fire department and the police department for this eventuality? I think they were as well equipped as they could be. They go through drills every year, earthquake drills, and, and that's the primarily, primary practice. That is to train firefighters and the police department. Uh, departments into, in, in handling something like this. And I might point out, when we, as we look at that, looked at that fire, that's, that's, that's what uh, officials fear the most, the fires. As you may remember in 1906 when the big earthquake hit San Francisco. 8.3 on the Richter that's scale what it was, right? That's what destroyed the city, the fires. The fire. Because, and now, of course, it's even enhanced to some extent by the fact that there are gas mains all over the city. And you start gas fires, which are extremely difficult to fight. San Francisco, though, was, I'd say, fairly well prepared in the sense that, that that buildings over the last number of years have been uh, built to withstand strong earthquakes, and I think that's probably why you don't see even more damage than, than we're hearing about. You have very, very tough city restrictions. We do, and the newer buildings are certainly built to withstand stronger earthquakes than the one that, that hit today. What's the regulation? What, what, what does the city require or the state require that you be prepared to deal with? Well, Just to remind people, the 6.5, uh, there was no Richter scale in 1906. 6.5 on the Richter scale is is classified as a quake which can do very severe damage. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. All right, Peter, I'll tell you what. Let me uh, let me take it back from you for Good, a moment. Please. And uh, you and I are sitting, parenthetically, you're sitting in New York. I'm sitting in Washington. Fortunately, Al Mike. Fortunately for us, if not for him, Al Michaels is still sitting in San Francisco. Al, where physically are you at Candlestick right now? Uh, right now, Ted, we are in our production truck, which is just outside the ballpark, clear of the overhang. And I think that's very important, too. Uh, one of the things that uh, you're trained uh, to do as a Californian is to make sure there is nothing above you. I know when I am at home and, uh, and I feel that an earthquake is, uh, is in progress, uh, I will normally go outside as quickly as I possibly can and get away from anything that might fall on top of you. And again, I mentioned, uh, you know, the one thing that I think I, I'd like to point out here, too, Ted, is that when word began to circulate at the ballpark that the magnitude of this earthquake was in the 6 to 6.9 range, 
I knew immediately that the epicenter had to be uh, 50, 75, maybe 100 miles from the ballpark. I was remarking about that to Tim McCarver as we were sitting through some of the aftershocks because I know uh, when I lived in this region, uh, in, in the city of Menlo Park one morning, I was awakened by uh, what I felt was the big one, as we've all come to expect in California, only to find out that the magnitude of the quake was 3.1, and then to find out the epicenter was a half a mile from my house. So obviously the key is to be as far away from the epicenter as possible to be able to avoid any damage. And all I can say, Ted, is thank God the epicenter was far enough away from Candlestick Park so that this structure remained erect. Yeah, well, of course, that doesn't do a lot, though, for the folks of Santa Cruz. This uh, took place, the epicenter was just 10 miles north of Santa Cruz. Let me, let me just debrief you for a moment, Al, in terms of your uh, expertise as a Californian on earthquakes. 10 miles away, 6.5 to 7 on the Richter scale. Can we infer anything uh, of, of what is likely to have happened in Santa Cruz tonight? Uh, obviously there has to be major damage against Santa Cruz is a uh, it's not really a, a metropolitan area. It's a lovely little community, and there are other communities that wind their way up through Highway 17 towards San Jose. And then uh, if you would proceed south from Santa Cruz down Highway 1, you'd eventually come to Monterey. So I would suspect, you know, this uh, earthquake was obviously felt all over what is known as the Bay Area. Also, the South Bay as well. And, you know, it's a, uh, an ironic thing that San Jose is now the biggest city in the Bay Area. So uh, there uh, were certainly after effects uh, of, of what took place in the city of San Jose and places like uh, Gilroy and all the way down the coast toward uh, perhaps San Luis Obispo. Uh, let's just briefly recapitulate for those members of our audience who may have joined us within the past few minutes. Obviously, the third game of the World Series has been canceled. The commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, said he will make a decision sometime tomorrow as to whether or not that third game can be played at Candlestick Park. We are looking live now at, uh, is that a shot from the blimp, Al, or is that a helicopter shot? If you are seeing what I am seeing, that's from the blimp. Are you seeing the Bay Bridge right now, That's Ted? exactly right. That's yes, a blimp that's shot. A, right. That's a blimp shot I, from the cantilevered, uh, again, that's the cantilevered portion of the Bay Bridge, the uh, top half of which has collapsed onto the bottom half. Again, that's the, the top half carries traffic from Oakland into San Francisco and the bottom half from San Francisco back the other way toward the East Bay. All right. As, as you can probably see now, Al, we are looking at videotape that was shot earlier. The reason we're going to that tape, as you will see in just a second, uh, is that you will see very clearly that 30 to 50 foot segment of the upper level of the bridge, which has collapsed onto the lower level of the bridge. Uh, and if it's the piece of videotape that I expect to see, uh, we'll be moving in even closer on that shot. And you will see that there are at least a couple of vehicles that were trapped down there. Uh, hundreds of cars on that lower level. Uh, obviously, they are going nowhere right now unless the police turn them around and get them off the bridge, which I assume they will have done in the past uh, hour and a half since this occurred. There's that vehicle that I was talking about a moment ago. San Francisco Airport has been closed down. That huge fire, and I, I hope that we will be getting a little more information on where that fire is and whether the fire department thinks they're going to get it under control, is just one of several fires blazing not only in San Francisco but also in in Oakland and in Berkeley, uh, although there is information uh, that Hal Bruno, our political director, who, as I said earlier, is uh, uh, himself a member of a volunteer fire department. He has been talking to friends and colleagues of his at the Los Angeles Fire Department. They've been monitoring communications with San Francisco. And uh, while Hal reports that there are several fires, all of them are being brought under control. All of them, I would assume, except that one that we have been looking at, which for one reason or another they may be allowing to, uh, to burn itself out. There have been large segments of highway uh, that have buckled. Uh, we have not even preliminary reports right now on any injuries that may have occurred either on the Bay Bridge or on those highways or elsewhere. Al, out at Candlestick, uh, amazingly and thankfully I think uh, you can report nobody hurt. As far as I can tell, Ted, no. Uh, everybody, uh, it was uh, an odd reaction at first. Uh, we all knew what it was. Uh, and yet most of the people remained. And in fact, there was a, a little bit of black humor as well. 15 or 20 minutes later, uh, despite a couple of soft aftershocks, there was a chant of play ball, play ball 
which quickly dissipated. And then uh, they had no communication here with the crowd. All of the power was gone, so you had no PA uh, system in effect. And then finally, uh, a couple of, uh, I, I take it, security people or officers came out onto the field and with bullhorns announced that uh, people were to evacuate the stadium. But everything, uh, Ted, was extremely orderly. Uh, there was no panic. Uh, it was more of a, a sense of wonderment than anything else. And again, it, it, it really took a little while for it to sink in. Uh, people were sort of uh, you know, wryly uh, laughing or, or making uh, jokes uh, a few minutes after the quake. And then as we walked out, maybe, oh, 20 to 25 minutes after the quake hit at 5.04, uh, there were some stricken looks on the faces of people at that point as the reality of what might have happened set in. Al, uh, while you were talking there, I was just being told in my ear that we have a reaction to what is going on right now from uh, both the, uh, the president, President Bush, and from his chief of staff, uh, John Sununu. John called the governor's office and got some information there. The governor's out of the country, but we're beginning to get a lot of information in here, and uh, obviously the federal government will do everything that the governor's office said they had some information on some uh, scattered fires. No confirmation exactly what the specific damage to the bridge was, although there is some damage that has warranted the closing of the bridge. There seems to be power out at the airport uh, in some of the major or components of the airport. So the airport is either operating at a very low level or shut down. It, it may be shut down. You may want this delay. They just handed me a report if you want to take a look at that. Uh, well, I don't know about tonight, but the team will be operating, working here to uh, see how we can assist. Nothing different than what I've just said. Uh, all right, that was uh, President Bush, of course, and uh, White House Chief of Staff Sununu. Here we have one of these curious situations, Al Michaels, that uh, I know you're familiar with. In an instance like this, where quite literally, sometimes the government is getting its information of what's happening from us, we're watching on television and trying to hear from them what's going on. This is one of those instances where I think we're a little bit ahead of what the White House has, because indeed the uh, airport at San Francisco has been closed down. Uh, the bridge, the damage that uh, the president was referring to, is damage that uh, you at home have been seeing and we have been reporting on uh, now for the better part of an hour and a half. Uh, and indeed, uh, the, uh, the only information we are not able to bring you at this point, because obviously all the emergency personnel in San Francisco are dealing with the crisis at the moment, uh, and uh, we are not yet getting very good reporting on what, if any, casualties there have been. Uh, and once again, Al, do you recognize that segment of San Francisco? That, that is a, a fairly enormous fire which seems to have consumed at least a block. Yes, Ted. As a matter of fact, as we have zoomed in here, assuming you're seeing the same thing I am seeing, uh, we would be looking west, uh, and as we pull back now, you will see eventually the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, which spans San Francisco and Marin County. That is, as I say, in... Um, the Marina Pacific Heights area. Uh, it's a, a few blocks from Fisherman's Wharf. In fact, as you can see there, it's uh, about two or three blocks from the marina with Fisherman's Wharf more toward the foreground at this particular point. I would say uh, I know the city fairly well. I can't tell you exactly what is being consumed right there, but generally that is a, uh, a residential area with uh, some small stores scattered here and there, maybe a mom and pop type convenience uh, store or whatever, but obviously the entire block or or more than that is being consumed right now and what appears to be very fortunately the the only major fire that we're able to see from our blimp and helicopter coverage uh, from San Francisco yeah it's it, it's the only one we can see but I must tell you Al apparently it is not the only one that is blazing right now we have uh, reports of a major fire in an area near the library at the University of California in Berkeley uh, and the Associated Press is reporting now that it has an unconfirmed report of a shopping mall that has collapsed in San Jose. Now, San Jose is how many miles to the south of San Francisco? San Jose would be uh, roughly 45 miles to the south, and as we mentioned before, uh, Ted, uh, San Jose would be far closer to the epicenter than San Francisco. The epicenter is near Santa Cruz. Uh, you can drive from Santa Cruz to San Jose in uh, oh, probably 25 to 30 minutes time. 
we mentioned before, it's a, it's a huge area. In fact, it's uh, more of the geographical and population center of the Bay Area than, than San Francisco. It's uh, a part of Silicon Valley. It's uh, been uh, tremendously developed, and the population has uh, doubled and tripled uh, in recent years. And uh, as I suspected before, without having firsthand knowledge, uh, no doubt they felt uh, the earthquake to a far larger extent in San Jose than the people did in San Francisco. All right. Uh, Al, there's just been a note handed me that that fire we've been looking at, we're still looking at the fire, although I think we have a freeze frame right now uh, of the, uh, the fire, is at a corner of Beach and Divisadero Streets, one and a half blocks from the Palace of Fine Arts. Uh, there have been some deaths reported in Hollister, uh, and Al, once again, I come to you as my California expert. Do you know where Hollister is? Yes, Hollister would be uh, roughly 30 miles south-southeast of uh, San Jose. It would be, I would estimate, uh, in the vicinity of 80 miles from San Francisco, almost due south, and certainly much closer to the epicenter of this quake, uh, if the epicenter is indeed in Santa Cruz. Uh, it would be much closer to the epicenter than the city of San Francisco. Now, just a, a parenthetical note, uh, the the Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant, uh, there is a report that they are on a level four alert, which is actually their lowest level. Uh, let me stress, let me emphasize, there is absolutely no indication of any damage at the Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant, but that too is uh, at least within reach here. How far away uh, is that from the from the epicenter? Uh, let's, let's make it from San Francisco. Do you happen to know, Al? Uh, it would be difficult for me to uh to figure that one out at this All right, we'll point. we'll I'm we'll we'll there. find someone we'll find someone who knows, and as soon as I know, I'll I'll be glad to report it to everybody else. Uh, but again, just to sort of recapitulate, as, as a matter of fact, take us back for a moment, Al, to uh, what happened earlier this evening at the park at Candlestick, and sort of describe to us. Uh, I heard you while you were on the air, and in fact, I just sort of picked up. I was I was having a sandwich, and I was just about to tune in and listen and watch uh, the beginning of the World Series, and I heard you talk about this historic unprecedented event and quite frankly I didn't know what you were talking about but well, fill us in will you at that point Ted I'm not sure I knew what I was talking about because all I was thinking about frankly at that point was survival uh, I mean the interesting thing is, is as you well know in television one of the things that uh, you do when you go on the air is you want to come on very very cleanly and and, and those of us in news and sports and Tim McCarver and Jim Palmer and I in the booth are working in a very intense state of concentration uh, at that particular moment. And if somebody were to pinch you, you would probably jump six feet. And all of a sudden, in the middle of all of this, where you're thinking very hard about where you're leading in regard to tape and all of that and taking commands from the truck, uh, there was this, this, this roll. And uh, I'm not sure that Tim, who lives in Philadelphia, necessarily knew what it was. In fact, uh, he did feel that uh, that the crowd was stopping uh, for whatever reason. I knew as a Californian that uh, it was an earthquake. In fact, Tim McCarver is, is in the truck right now. And, and let me, let's get uh, a non-Californian's response from Tim as to what he felt. Hello, Ted. Hello, uh, how are you, Tim? I'm fine, thank you. Um, my first uh, reaction was uh, one of the upper deck, the deck above us, uh, I was in uh, in Chicago in 1984. Go ahead, Tim. As you see, the traffic backed up in yeah. the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, if ever there was cause for a traffic jam, uh, San Francisco certainly has it tonight. Uh, again, there's been a, an earthquake uh, with a reading of 6.5 to 6.9 on the Richter scale, and. Uh, that that traffic would that be traffic that has come from the Candlestick Park area and is trying to get back into San Francisco. Tim, do you know? I, I, uh, I don't know why I'm asking a Philadelphian. Ted, I, I, I had a feeling that you were going to ask something about it. Ask that question again, and maybe I can help you here. I, I that just, traffic there? Yeah, I was wondering that whether that there, would be. No, that's not a freeway. That is uh, an east-west artery near Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, it would it would not be near the freeway system. In fact, that's that's local traffic, or that's a spectator traffic, or whatever. Again, that's an east-west uh, artery in the city of San Francisco. You're looking at there. Uh, there would normally, Ted, be a lot of traffic in this city anyway at uh, 6:43 local time. So that particular shot is not that unusual. I'm sure there are. There are those who are out uh, gawking and spectating and maybe adding a little bit more to it, but maybe 10 to 15%. It's a uh, very heavily traveled, obviously, time of day, as it is in most major 
American cities. But um, to reiterate, Ted, in terms of uh, the traffic problems in this area, I can't begin to tell you what the magnitude of those problems will be with the collapse of a section of the Bay Bridge, because in the best right, of times, Al, it's difficult to get around. Let me interrupt you just for one moment, because we have a tape report from our affiliate KGO on the collapse of that Bay Bridge, and I understand there has been at least one fatality. Let's take a look at that report right now. Severed. You're seeing a car that attempted to drive over this 50-foot gap in the Bay Bridge. It has been like a drama here. It has been dangling from the edge, the precipice behind me, and these folks are just getting rescued right now. It's been about an hour-long effort. It's been a frightening scene here. As you can see just below me is where this crack in the Bay Bridge occurred, a 50-foot section. You see down there below the two cars, two cars that were on the upper deck when the bridge collapsed. They fell below. We understand that the people in both of those cars did get out safely. We do All right, so there you have a report from Leslie Brinkley. Uh, I apologize to you because I was under the impression that there was some word of uh, what the casualties might have been. We did see someone being attended to there behind Leslie. Uh, I don't know what condition that person was in. We do have a ham radio report now that says there is severe damage in the areas of San Jose and Hollister, California, both of which, as Al Michaels told you, are some miles south uh, some miles south of San Francisco, uh, and therefore that much closer to the epicenter. Uh, and uh, standing by right now, I'm sorry I did not get the name, Sid Sydney Kohara. Right. Sydney, if you can bring us up to date on, on what is happening, whatever new information you can give us, we'd be very grateful for it. Go ahead, Sydney. Um, what we are finding out now is uh, that we are, we are having a pretty terrible problem with some fires in the Bay Area. Uh, one, especially right now, that is raging is in an area known as the Marina District, which is very close to the Golden Gate Bridge. It's a, uh, an, an older district. It's more on the uh, flat level, probably about uh, most of the buildings are probably uh, four or five stories high. Uh, we have a, a, a terrible fire there that I, I can, I remember looking out my window when the uh, earthquake hit, saw some smoke. Um, the building apparently has collapsed and they are looking for people now, if in fact they can get that close, because uh, the latest pictures that we had um, look like uh, there was no way if someone was in the building that they could have gotten out. Yeah, Sydney, uh, I don't, I don't know if you have uh, access to a uh, to a monitor and whether you're getting the network feed on that monitor. But in point of fact, we've been getting aerial mm -hmm. shots from the the Goodyear blimp uh, and are looking at it right now. Perhaps you'd be good enough to describe precisely where that area is for non-Californians uh, and also what kind of a neighborhood it is, because we can see, uh, you know, just what kind of a fire it is. It's an, it really is a raging inferno right now. Right. Uh, if if you you are aware of where the Golden Gate Bridge is as it leads into Marin County. Uh, just to the right of the bridge, uh, you have uh, an area that uh, is known as the Marina District. That is where it is. It is uh, just south of the bay before you go under the Golden Gate Bridge. So it is, uh, it's a very beautiful area. Um, it is um, just uh, a little bit uh, southwest of uh, Fisherman's Wharf. Um, it's uh, it's a little bit north of Pacific Heights, and like I said, it's a very beautiful area near Lombard Street, uh, very very picturesque, and um, it's really I think it's amazing for me not having lived in the city that long and been in uh, California for about five years to think that that would be the area that would go down first. There are, there are many many tall buildings in this area, and uh, that's where it looks like probably about a four or five story apartment building. Uh, that area is very congested. There are a lot of people that live in, in a small area. So I think that, that we're very worried here looking at that particular fire because uh, when the earthquake first hit, no one really uh, knew. We didn't um, really think about telling people as far as to cut off their gas. And as soon as we uh, realized to tell them to cut off their gas, perhaps in this particular situation, it was a little too late. Well, I think, um, you've, I think you've put your finger on precisely the point because it's been suggested to me that what causes fires like that in the event of, a, of an earthquake Break, mm -hmm. is precisely a ruptured gas main. Now, it, it may well be that even if people had turned off the gas in their homes, when a main ruptures, uh, and if you have any kind of sparks uh, caused by the friction of the earthquake itself, uh, there is nothing that could prevent that fire from beginning. But what reports do you have, uh, Sydney, if you could just bring us up to date? 
I've been saying now for the past half hour or so that we do not yet have any kinds of casualty reports. We don't know if anyone's been killed. We don't know if anyone's been injured. Right. Uh, can, can you bring me up to speed on that? Ted, what we're finding out at this particular point, I just talked to CHP about 10 minutes ago. And California the Highway Patrol? Right, the California Highway Patrol. Uh, the problem they are having is the problem that I think all the emergency, Office of Emergency Services, all the people in San Francisco are having. The phone lines are down. The California Highway Patrol is trying to get out to all of their offices to try to get reports on what is happening in the particular districts and they're having a very very difficult time I managed to get through and at this particular time they're trying to just get their forces together and try to get uh, try to survey the particular districts in the particular areas uh, within the Bay and the East Bay um, uh, what they could tell me is that they are mobilizing forces they are bringing in their uh, uh, their helicopter and some other other uh, uh, pieces of equipment from Sacramento from the capital they are also mobilizing forces from uh, different parts of the state, getting them into the Bay Area and getting ready to disperse them uh, if there's going to be a need. And at this particular time, I think once they finally get the phone lines in, uh, you're going to see a lot of need. All right, let me uh, let me quickly tap whatever uh, local expertise you have there, because I'm hearing that the worst uh, the worst damage or severe damage, at least, has taken place in San Jose and in Hollister. How far from San Francisco? What kind of population centers? are we talking about? Okay. There? We are looking at San Jose and Hollister. We're looking at, from what I understand, the epicenter was about uh, uh, 50 miles southeast. That is uh, the preliminary report that I'm getting. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm looking at here. 10 miles northeast of, of Santa Cruz, 10 miles south of San Jose. Uh, they're looking at major damage in those areas, but we haven't gotten any, we don't have any specific reports. Uh, the preliminary report that we do have uh, from the uh, uh, Berkeley seismology center the preliminary estimates are showing that it registered a 6.5 and I don't really know of any uh, uh, instances of severe damage in that area uh, but since we are uh, located in the San Francisco area we're very aware of what is happening here we've got reporters on the scene in uh, different areas in the Oakland area and we've got a Bay Bureau which I don't think we've heard from yet but we're hoping to hear from them any minute now all right, Sydney, thank you very much. Standing by now is Bob Olson of the Seismic Safety Commission. Uh, Mr. Olson, what can you tell us about the earthquake itself? Thank you very much. I, I would say that we've got a borderline regional catastrophe here. Um, I'm very concerned about what you just mentioned, the areas that we're not hearing from. And that's the epicentral area, the San Jose, which is... Uh, very large uh, metropolitan area, the Monterey Peninsula, the Hollister area, where the San Andreas Hayward and Calaveras Falls all come together. Plus, what's coming in here now is um, we're getting glimpses of widespread damage near the fire. We're seeing some collapsed buildings. Uh, there have been other shots of collapsed elevated freeways in San Francisco. And I'm very worried, given the time of day that this uh, took place, about um, casualties in cars that may have been caught in those um, particular structures. Mr. Olson, forgive my ignorance, but what does your organization do? Well, uh, I was the first director of the California Seismic Safety Commission, and now I'm a private consultant specializing in earthquake and natural hazards uh, mitigation. What is it we should be looking for now? We are looking, I mean, as you and I are speaking together right now, and, and I don't, uh, I hope our viewers don't get the wrong impression, San Francisco is not totally on fire. Sometimes it looks that way when we get too much of a, a close-up there, but we are looking uh, at one particular square block area of San Francisco that is in very, very bad shape. And indeed, there are some other fires uh, in Berkeley and in Oakland. Uh, and Bob Olson, I don't know if you can still hear me. I guess we've just uh, lost that line, and that's not too surprising. We're having trouble with telephone lines all over the region. What Bob Olson, uh, who used to be the commissioner of the Seismic Safety Commission, was telling us is that perhaps the most alarming information uh, of the night is not the information that we have, but the information that we do not have from areas like San Jose and Santa Cruz and Hollister. These are areas about 40, 50, 60 miles south of San Francisco and therefore, therefore on the San Andreas Fault, right on the epicenter of this earthquake, which is registered between 6.5 and 6.9 on the Richter scale. No information at the moment from those areas which could be, and I don't 
don't want to alarm people who have families in those areas, but that could be uh, a sign that uh, maybe the worst that has happened there is simply that the telephone system is out. But that is the area that we are most concerned about at the moment, although, as you can see, there is considerable damage in and around San Francisco. Standing by at the White House now is our White House correspondent, my colleague Britt Hume. What's the president doing and uh, what is the federal government doing or going to do, Britt? Well, the president, to the extent that he could, has put the federal government in action tonight. He is retired to the family quarters here at the White House. Uh, Governor Sununu, uh, his chief of staff, is monitoring the situation. He has called over the uh, one of the heads of the Federal Emergency Management Agency who came here and reported. Uh, Robert Morris is his name, and he uh, said that the uh, earthquake was a 6.9. That puts it at the highest of the range that we've been told and that the epicenter was indeed 60 miles southeast of, uh, southeast of San Francisco. Morris has now returned apparently to the, uh, to the FEMA headquarters, which will be the Washington command post for such uh, operations as are conducted here. Sununu also um, has reached Department of Defense officials who, and made sure that uh, the Pentagon is ready to uh, put uh, troops, if necessary, into action. Uh, nothing much more was said here about that, Ted, but I would regard that as a sign of the seriousness uh, with which the White House regards the potential here. Get the sense, Britt, that uh, folks at the White House know any more about what's going on right now than we do. I don't mean that to sound like a snotty question. It's just at times like this, sometimes it's it's more difficult for them to get information than it is for us. Well, I suspect that in terms of actually seeing anything, that those pictures from the Goodyear blimp are probably the best view of it that anybody in this town has had. Uh, I do know that Governor Sununu tried to reach uh, officials in the governor's office in California. Governor Dugmajian uh, was not at this dinner here tonight, which was like Republican governor's dinners. Apparently, out of the country. I, I could be wrong about that, but that was the information that uh, White House officials here had. And he got some details uh, which uh, go no further, really, than the details we have reported about the extent of the damage in the San Francisco area. And, of course, uh, obviously the White House is watching with considerable alarm uh, to see what has happened in the area south uh, near the center of the earthquake. All right, Britt Hume, thank you very much. I'm going to go back now to uh, my colleague from ABC Sports, Al Michaels. This was to be the night, Al, that you reported on the, uh, on the third game of the World Series. Instead, here we are doing live and continuous coverage of what looks as though it may be quite a catastrophe in the Northern California area. Just bring us, uh, and, and once again, we're looking at that picture, and I understand why uh, uh, we keep putting it up. It's a very dramatic-looking shot, but I, again, I don't want to leave people with the impression that San Francisco is ablaze. Uh, that is one relatively confined area of, of San Francisco, uh, and there are other... Uh, major incidents that have occurred, perhaps the biggest of which that we know about at the moment, is that the bridge that connects Oakland and San Francisco, one, one portion of the upper span of that bridge has collapsed onto the lower span. Uh, but again, Al, one of the reasons we are staying on the air right now is because we do not yet have even preliminary casualty reports yet, and we'd like to give our audience some sense of how many, if any, uh, people have been injured. Now, if you would sort of bring us up to speed, take it uh, uh, as you were doing a few moments ago when we talked, uh, from where you first became aware of the fact that there was an earthquake and then what happened during the course of the next hour or so out there at Candlestick Park. Well, again, to reiterate, Ted, basically uh, most of the crowd was here. Uh, they would have had 62,000 total, and I would suspect that uh, 55 to 58,000 people were in the ballpark. Uh, it lasted, uh, I would guess, uh, around 30 seconds. Fortunately, there was no major jolt. It was more of a steady shake and roll. But there was a, a very definite sense, I'm sure, amongst uh, people who've lived in this area and have experienced these, uh, that a jolt was imminent, a major jolt. Uh, as I mentioned before, there was a sense of um, us in the mezzanine uh, with the upper deck above us and the lower deck below us of, of moving backwards and, in effect, uh, collapsing upon uh, the lower deck. Uh, there was a strange feeling uh, in the stadium. There was, a, I, I would guess, an ooh and an ah. Again, I didn't really have the presence of mind to necessarily uh, be that tuned into uh, uh, the collective gasps of 58,000. But then, uh, as there normally is when you're with a, a large gathering during an earthquake, uh, there were wry smiles and, in fact, uh, 
oh, five or six minutes after the quake when we had lost power and didn't have to remain in the broadcast booth. Uh, Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver and I went out onto uh, uh, the back of the mezzanine area at Candlestick Park, and the fans were out there saying, gee, you know, I hope they can get the game underway, and, you know, uh, hey, guys, do you think the Giants can come back? Uh, so at first, you're not quite sure what had taken place, uh, and then uh, the reality of it, of course, begins to settle in at, uh, amongst the crowd. They then evacuated the crowd. It took them a good, um, I would estimate, 40 minutes before the announcement was made that uh, the candlestick should be evacuated. Strangely, um, very few people left the ballpark, and uh, even more strangely, I think very few people uh, got out onto the field. Perhaps they were not allowed out onto the field, but I mean, if... Uh, uh, we were ever, uh, God forbid, to have a, a situation like this uh, take place again in a major American arena, they should immediately let everybody get out onto the field, which probably would have been the safest place for everybody to be at Candlestick Park. And then everybody sort of uh, filed out uh, when the game was uh, postponed officially. Again, fortunately, there was no panic. There was no crowding. None of that. As far as I can tell, there have been no injuries at Candlestick Park. Again, I'm sure they will be checking for structural damage as to what will happen to the rest of the World Series, I wouldn't have a clue at this point, Ted, because uh, the problems in this area are uh, far larger right now than the resumption of play in the World Series. Al Michaels, as, uh, as we've been saying periodically throughout the course of this evening, one of the reasons that we have not yet been able to bring you any casualty reports, and I am assuming that there will have been some casualties, although as you pointed out, uh, fortunately they do not appear to have been any at Candlestick Park itself. As soon as we get any casualty reports, we will of course bring them to you. But let me explain once again what is getting in the way of collecting any of that information. The phone lines are down. There is very bad communication. Uh, one of the miracles is that you and I are still able to communicate at all and that we're able to see you uh, and get that picture and get some of those remarkable aerial shots from the Goodyear blimp. Uh, you know, it, it looked at one point uh, as though there was almost an emotional aftershock there at the stadium. Uh, we saw some of the players with their wives and a couple of the wives quite literally in tears uh, as ball players did uh, what everybody else does in a situation like that. You start to look for your family. Uh, you try to get everybody together again. You start counting heads. We're looking at some of that videotape now of some of the ball players with their youngsters. You want to take us through that? Right. Well, I can see Storm Davis, uh, the Oakland the pitcher. And you're exactly right. Uh, what had happened, Ted, is that, uh, and, and there, uh, I believe, is Terry Steinbach. Yes, that is. And, and his wife and Mark McGuire and Faye Vincent is in your picture right now, the commissioner of baseball. It took a while for it to settle in uh, before everybody really realized what had taken place. And then the wives were allowed to uh, to go down onto the playing field uh, and join their husbands. And uh, the children came down as well. And everybody, as I say, very orderly filed out of the park. You know, one thing about earthquakes, Ted, is that you're not sure uh, how close to the epicenter you are. So, in fact, uh, had we been at the epicenter of this quake uh, tonight, not this particular quake, but let's say that there had been an, uh, oh, a small earthquake at Candlestick Park in the neighborhood of uh, 2.8 or 3.2, there would have been very, very, there would have been no damage here, very little any place else. So I think that was perhaps the sense of what people had. You you begin to feel you are at the epicenter, and if you were, this would have been a very, very small quake uh, where it's centered near Candlestick Park. You have no idea, of course, where the epicenter was. And as I stated before, once I knew it was in the six range, you knew as a uh, as a Californian that it had to be uh, 75 to 100 miles away at least because now, let uh, me, all uh, of the damage is done near the epicenter, most let, of it. Let me just interrupt you for one moment. Once again, we're getting that extraordinary uh, aerial shot from the, uh, from the blimp of the fire in the uh, marina area. That's not too far. Uh, from the Golden Gate Bridge, which I, I, I believe those are the lights of the Golden Gate Bridge that you can see in the background there. Uh, I am told that the fire in the, man, in the marina area, that fire that you're looking at, appears to be gas-fed. Uh, and the uh, fire department in San Francisco is not putting water on the fire because that would dampen it down, obviously. Uh, that would be the good news, but the bad news would be that dampening it down would create fumes, which in turn could cause a major explosion. So what they're trying to do, what the fire department is trying to do is to surround, protect the surrounding billion, uh, buildings, but they can't put fire on the, uh, they, they can't put water rather on the main fire itself until the gas leak
lake itself is capped. Now, how they are going to do that, as you look at that fire, you can see uh, what an extraordinary blaze it is. How they're going to cap the gas leak, I do not know. Uh, Al Michaels, you know, you were talking a moment ago uh, about the orderly fashion in which Candlestick Park was evacuated. In point of fact, I don't know if you're aware, but at one time the police inside Candlestick Park were urging people not to leave the park, to stay there, because they said the building itself, the structure, is uh, structurally sound and apparently they believe it is a fairly good place to be in an earthquake. Uh, well Go ahead, Al. Well, I think they would have been uh, remarkably prescient to be able to predict that and, and not predict uh, uh, and not take into effect what might have been uh, a large aftershock or aftershocks. I think it was more a case uh, in retrospect here, Ted, of, uh, of it being a very good idea that the police did what they did at least to avoid panic, because uh, now that I begin to think about it, had uh, somebody come on with a panic-stricken announcement to evacuate, uh, you can imagine what it would be like in a stadium that would hold in excess of 55,000 people, a stadium with relatively small aisles. Again, this was a ballpark built before a lot of the modern stadiums of today, which uh, have uh, Al, for, better for, egress. Forgive me, Al, forgive me for interrupting you. I don't know if you can say, we're looking at some street scenes right now. Do you have a network line? in front of you? Can yes, you see I do. In fact, I can at? see. I can. All right. Yes, so that, you can is... see there, there really has been some extraordinary damage. Uh, do you happen to recognize that area? Well, that, that appears to me to either be the area we're seeing uh, right now in those live shots from above. Uh, the houses in the area in which that fire is taking place right now are similar uh, in style to those. Again, I can't tell you for certain that that is uh, uh, tape there of what uh, you are seeing or what we have been seeing live. But uh, it, it appears to me to be in the neighborhood and similar to the, uh, the types of homes that uh, would be in, involved in the inferno that we've seen in the Marina District. Well, indeed, you were saying a moment ago that, that is a, uh, it is a residential area that clearly looks like a residential area. And quite frankly, the way that fire looked and the way uh, those buildings were cracked, uh, it would be consistent with everything we've heard. Let me just say again, because we've spent so much time looking at that fire this evening, uh, that apparently what the fire department is doing is quite deliberately not dousing that inferno uh, with water because of their fear that by dousing the fire, they would create toxic fumes that would be spread all over the area and that ironically would be even more dangerous than the fire. Um, Al, if you would, just sort of set the stage for us again. Uh, timing in terms of when this happened, how it happened, and uh, what's happened, although it now seems almost trivial to be talking about the World Series, what in fact has happened to the series? Well, everybody in San Francisco is just euphoric, and throughout the Bay Area, we've uh, documented that, and I'm sure people know how uh, excited this entire area was to have the whole World Series being played here. So there was a sense of celebration, and everybody was filing into Candlestick Park, and it was to have been the first World Series game to be played at Candlestick Park in 27 years. And uh, we were just coming on the air. We have a pregame show that begins at 5 o'clock. I think first pitch was scheduled in the uh, neighborhood of 520 or 525. And uh, so the, the crowd was still filing in, and people, I'm sure, were still parking their cars. Some of them, even though, as I mentioned, most of the uh, people appeared to have been in the stadium, they were about ready, as I recall, on the field to introduce the, the lineups, to introduce the, uh, the, the crowd to the players. They had a band uh, playing, and it was just a, uh, a very celebratory type of mood that had permeated Candlestick at that point, when all of a sudden, uh, I'm sure to those who uh, have not lived through this type of thing, uh, uh, there had to be a sense of what in the world was going on. As Tim McCarver mentioned, he began to, to think that the, the crowd was stopping for whatever reason. It wasn't a, uh, a point uh, where you would expect something like that. You might expect something like that uh, during the course of a rally. Uh, those of us who've been here and have been through them, it didn't take very long for us to understand that this was an earthquake, and you just have a feeling of holding on at that point because you don't know if it will get worse. You don't know if you will get that uh, tremendous jolt that you all fear and certainly in a precarious position of being in a, in a baseball stadium and not on the field and and in essence uh, the bottom of the upper deck uh, it was a, just a, a horrible moment and uh, we were on the air and uh, it was a case of uh, as I say us feeling or at least me feeling that we were going backwards for just a second and we're about to collapse onto the the lower deck. In fact, I understand you're seeing right now uh, what we were going through, and I was looking.
looking back at that point, uh, knowing what was going on, Tim and Jim, uh, Jim I know has uh, lived in California off and on for, for years as well, but uh, it, it takes a little while for the reality of it to settle in. And again, you know you have been through a quake. The key was, I think, why people uh, were, oh, not... I don't want to say giddy or anything, but when we went out onto the mezzanine and the fans were talking baseball and will the game be resumed, they had no sense, of course, of the magnitude of this. As All I right. say, had this been centered here, uh, it wouldn't have done very much uh, damage outside the epicenter, but uh, it, it obviously was a major, major uh, earthquake at its epicenter, and we obviously right. felt the effects here. Al Michaels, let me just interrupt you for a moment because we, we have uh, some new information that we haven't been able to report yet. We, we received a call from a man who said he spoke to his wife in Santa Cruz. Now, that is the area right near the epicenter that we've been talking about, uh, and we have been making the observation. Indeed, I was speaking with Bob Olson a moment ago, uh, who at one point was the commissioner of the Seismic Safety Commission uh, in California. We have Bob Olson on the phone. Uh, the man who spoke to his wife in San Francisco, Mr. Olson, said uh, that she told him that as of 9.55 Eastern time, that's about 15 minutes ago, that the house was still shaking. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell me? The house is still shaking in Santa Cruz? In Santa Cruz about 15 minutes ago, and as we know, the, uh, uh, the first waves that they felt in San Francisco would have been around 8.05 Eastern Time. So yeah. almost three hours later, they're, they're still shaking in Santa Cruz. Well, in the epicentral area, it looks, sounds to me like they're getting lots of rapid aftershocks. Um, these may be very relatively small magnitude and uh, you know occurring fairly frequently but right in that in that vicinity um, somebody raised the question about uh, how long will these continue well they uh, aftershocks from an event will continue for weeks and, and maybe months but only a few of those will be really noticeable and those usually occur within a few days let me just uh, tell you, Mr. Wilson, I, I assume you cannot see our picture right now, but we're looking once again at a sort of wide uh, aerial shot of the uh, San Francisco area, and at the heart uh, of the shot is that blazing fire, uh, and you see a few rows of lights, but those are vehicles. Those are the headlights of cars that you see. One of the things you may notice is that you see very few lights, that is, electrical lights, in the San Francisco area. I am told that there is no power anywhere between San Francisco and San Bruno, that the San Francisco International Airport is limited to out outbound flights. There are no inbound flights. Apparently, there have been some cracks in the runway. Oakland Airport, Alameda Naval Air Station, no flights in or out. Two air traffic controllers at San Francisco International Airport were injured by flying gl uh, glass, and there has been some structural damage to the air traffic control tower. So these are just a few of the fragmentary pieces of information that we're getting about what's going on at San Francisco right now. The worst news of all is, now that night has fallen in San Francisco, is that the power is out, uh, and uh, we are hearing that the difficulty in containing the uh, the fires there and i uh, you know that one fire of course has really dominated our pictures uh, once again let me emphasize uh, it's not our impression that there are very many fires around the san francisco area but there are some others some over in oakland some in berkeley uh, and the danger uh, the fire department says that they can't use water on those fires which they believe have been caused by a ruptured gas main uh, because dousing the fire would simply cause noxious fumes then, toxic noxious fumes, uh, to be admitted. There's an Associated Press advisory that uh, says there will be more information coming on casualties. Uh, the information that we have right now is the police are talking about six dead in San Francisco, crushed uh, in cars by a building collapse. Now, I can't pretend uh, to tell you that I know where that building collapsed, what we have seen so far, and we've been taking these fragmentary pieces of videotape and information as we get them. 
what we've seen so far has been of sort of hairline fractures uh, out at Candlestick Park, uh, some major damage to some of the highways uh, leading from Candlestick Park into uh, uh, the center of San Francisco. We have seen that one huge fire and, of course, the Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland and San Francisco, one 30 to 50 foot segment of the upper level. That's a two-tiered bridge at that point. A 30 to 50 segment of that bridge, a uh, foot segment of that bridge has collapsed onto the lower section of the bridge. Still standing by at the White House is our White House correspondent, Britt Hume. Uh, Britt, any late word on what the federal government is doing? Yeah, well, Ted, the, uh, the, w the latest information the White House has, and of course this is the, the worrisome thing, is that the greatest damage is in the Santa Cruz area. And of course that links with the information you got in that telephone report and suggests that uh, in the areas uh, to the south, uh, from which so little information has come is where the greatest trouble is. A couple of other things. Governor Sununu has apparently reached uh, California Go uh, Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy, and as a consequence of that phone call, he, has, he Governor Sununu, has authorized an Air Force plane to fly uh, California Governor George Duke Majin back to the United States from Frankfurt, which is either where Governor Duke Majin is at the moment or the nearest place from which he can fly, so he will soon presumably be bound back to the United States. That is the latest here, Ted. All right, and just to sort of bring you a little bit up to date, I told you a moment ago that uh, there was a report of at least six people who were crushed to death by a building that collapsed. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce it. It's B-L-U-X-O-M-E, Bluxom Street. Uh, apparently part of an old building collapsed on a number of cars uh, that were passing by, and at least, at least six people uh, were crushed to death when that building collapsed. Um, one of the great difficulties we have in terms of bringing information to you at this point uh, is on the one hand we have all kinds of information from Candlestick Park where mercifully very little has happened other than that the World Series have been cancelled and all the people who were in the stadium have been asked to leave and, and all but a few uh, including uh, Al Michaels and our ABC sports staff out there uh, have evacuated the area. Um, we know what's happening there. We can show you uh, by virtue of the Goodyear blimp and our camera on board that blimp some aerial shots of San Francisco, but it is night there now. Uh, and what you uh, can see, uh, we're looking at it, uh, are what appear to be rows of lights, but those, uh, I hasten to remind you, are rows of cars, most of them stalled in traffic, and those are the automobile headlights that you're looking at there. For the most part, what you see is a blacked out San Francisco. The electricity is out. The telephones are out. The power is down. Uh, and, of course, that compounds all the, uh, the other problems uh, that have been caused by the earthquake. Uh, and clearly, it also compounds the problem of communication. And we're having a devil of a time finding out for you just what the overall casualty report in and around San Francisco has been. To repeat, however, uh, San Francisco, even though we've been focusing most of our attention on that city tonight, San Francisco does not seem to be uh, where the worst trouble may be, and I stress the may. The epicenter of the, uh, of the earthquake occurred some 40 to 50 miles south of San Francisco in an area uh, that is sort of surrounded by Santa Cruz and San Jose and Hollister, and that may be where the worst damage of the evening has occurred. Al Michaels, anything new that you can add? Uh, no, but I can only tell you, Ted, that this area will uh, come to a virtual stop because of the collapse of that portion of the Bay Bridge. Uh, at the time the earthquake hit, most of the traffic on that bridge would have been on the, the lower level. If it was a typical rush hour type of situation, it would have been... Uh, completely bumper to bumper and stop and go on the bottom level and the top level collapsing onto the bottom level would have under normal circumstances uh, would have had what I would describe as a moderate amount of traffic. Uh, for the most part the uh, commuting flow would go from the city of San Francisco to the East Bay. Those people would have taken the bottom level and those coming from the East Bay into San Francisco at that hour would have been on the upper level of the Bay Bridge. But th that is beyond question, uh, Ted. Uh, uh, far and away the most important artery linking this area of some six million people uh, and obviously I'm not going to sit here and, and estimate how long
long it will take for the bridge to be repaired and for traffic to resume, but uh, it will be absolute uh, gridlock around this area for as long as it takes to, to fix that bridge. And in terms of the, I think you said there, there were about 55 to 60,000 people at Candlestick there tonight. No injuries at Candlestick. All those people made it out all right. As far as I can tell, I mean, I'd hate to, to tell you that every, all of the 58,000 are fine, Ted, but I mean, there was no indication that we saw, uh, and everybody seemed to file out in an orderly fashion. I didn't see anybody being wheeled out on a stretcher or anything like that, and I haven't had any reports of that. So as far as I can tell you, everything was fine here at Candlestick. All right, Al Michaels, thanks very much. Uh, I'll probably be coming back to you in just a few minutes, but standing by by phone now is Willis Jacobs of the National Earthquake Information Center. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, I don't know what information you have access to, but please, whatever you've got, tell us. Well, our information is pretty sketchy. The earthquake did occur at 5.04 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time today. We computed the magnitude at 6.9 on the Richter scale. We have reports of damage and injuries in the San Francisco Bay Area, partial collapse of buildings in San Jose, one person dead of a heart attack there and four injured. Damage in San Benito, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and it was felt in western Nevada. And unfortunately, that's the extent of our information at this time. What should we, uh, what should we conclude from the fact that we are not hearing much from those areas uh, around the epicenter, those areas around Santa Cruz and San Jose? I believe the problem is that the, tele the telephone lines have been cut. I think that's the main thing. Now, of all the places in the world, Northern California probably has more reason to expect earthquakes uh, than perhaps any other populated, heavily populated area. Uh, haven't allowances been made for a circumstance like this? And isn't there some kind of an emergency communication system that exists? Uh, I don't know if there is or not as far as the the uh, people are concerned in that area. We haven't been get, able to get through to uh, our seismologists in the area either. Just give me a sense, Mr. Jacobs, of, of what an earthquake uh, along the magnitude of uh, 6.5 to 6.9, what, uh, how does that compare with other earthquakes that, uh, that we have known over the past few years? Well, this is classified as a strong earthquake. It has plenty of energy to cause damage and uh, casualties depending on the depth, depending on where it is and what type of a fault occurred when the earthquake happened. And certainly it's a large enough earthquake to have severe damage and casualties in the San Francisco Bay Area. All right, Willis Jacobs of the uh, National Earthquake Information Center, thank you very much indeed. What you were looking at there, and more and more that is going to be the picture of the night, uh, is darkness. The, uh, that last shot that you saw, I believe, were lights from Candlestick Park, uh, but the other, the high shot from the Goodyear blimp, uh, is now increasingly, that's the shot, I believe, of Candlestick Park, uh, but the other picture that we were looking at is increasingly going to be able to focus on only one point of light, and that is that huge fire that's burning down near the waterfront in San Francisco itself. Al Michaels, were you trying to jump in there a moment ago? Uh, no, sir, Ted. Uh, I'm not quite certain those are the lights of Candlestick Park. Uh, well, guess now I'm being told that they are. The, the lights, uh, the what would be the, the playing field lights, have basically been uh, been turned off. So, yes, uh, I can see a better shot of it right now. Those are the remaining lights at Candlestick. I'm not sure how much power is on here. Those, in fact, could be uh, the emergency lights. Uh, another thing that came to mind, Ted, is the, the fact that as many structures in, in this area are uh, forced to do through the years, uh, they must undergo um, extensive examination and uh, the officials come in uh, from time to time and take a look at uh, better earthquake proofing measures. And I know for a fact it'll come to light later on. I don't have any reference material with me right now, obviously, but uh, Candlestick Park underwent a relatively extensive earthquake check. And in fact, some uh, extra poles were added to help support the roof above the upper deck. As I recall, that was eight or nine years ago. And whether or not that came into play, I can't tell you. Now, at the risk of being repetitious, I just don't want uh, our viewers to become excessively uh, alarmed. We keep talking about Candlestick Park, and while you and I are talking about Candlestick Park, we see that blazing inferno there. 
That is in fact happening and it is a terrible fire and it appears to be in one of the older residential areas of San Francisco down near the waterfront uh, and perhaps about three quarters of a mile from the Golden Gate Bridge. But I want to make it clear that fire has nothing to do with what happened at Candlestick Park. Apparently there were, there were neither fatalities nor, uh, almost miraculously it appears, any injuries. What we are going to do right now is take a look at a package of some video that we have put together that will give you a sense uh, of uh, what's been happening earlier this evening. But before we do that, we're going to go live to uh, uh, our uh, affiliated station out in San Francisco, KGO approximately 50 minutes to move our way from Candlestick through Hunter's Point using some of the bad roads, the back roads that we are familiar with. What we saw was eerie and frankly frightening. There are no lights in the city to speak of now except in a few of the highest buildings that have their own power sources. People out on, uh, out on the stoops and in the streets of uh, all the homes in, in Hunter's Point in that area. Then we moved uh, uh, across near Army Street through the warehouse district, uh, cut over toward Mission and Market Street. Uh, in fact, went past uh, Sutter General Hospital there and uh, that had been uh, completely cut off, cordoned off by emergency people. Uh, lights on in there, obviously working very hard at this point. We moved down Potrero and uh, through the business district and up over into Russian Hill. Now, uh, we saw the same thing. People on the streets, people unfocused, uh, appearing not to know what to do. We can tell you one thing, that once we arrived at approximately Lombard Street and moved our way into uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, the North Beach area, we smelled gas at virtually every intersection. The gas is everywhere. All we can tell you is not to smoke not to light fires. Don't do anything which can disturb that. If you smell gas in your building, get out of your building. But be careful. It is dark now, and anything can happen on those streets. But if you smell gas, please stay out of the building. And it's going to be very obvious to you out there. It will do no good to panic at this point, obviously, but it is extremely important that you do that. Again, it, it, it's, it's very unfocused, but the sense of seeing the city, uh, the smoke coming from the marina, and we could see it all the way oh, with yes. no lights, is, uh, is a truly frightening experience. Experience. At the stadium itself, um, I think a lot of people, in a sense, in a, in a mild state of shock, not knowing when to leave, not knowing where to go, and really not knowing much information. So many of them from the South Bay as they were. You were outside. Uh, at the I was time. standing outside in the parking lot, about to go into the elevator yes. that, in fact, broke down. So I was I'm virtually a minute from now. Did you see any structural damage to Candlestick? There was structural damage. Now, you're going to hear con you know, conflicting reports on this. Some pieces of concrete, particularly in the walkway areas, cracked and simply crumbled there. We did not see sections of the upper lip of the stadium fall, as was reported earlier, but there are cracks visible. They are not big cracks. The stadium apparently took this fairly well. I talked to Bob Lurie, who said his people told him there was no severe damage to the stadium, and so that's why they felt they shouldn't move people out in a panic situation. They oh, let yes. them filter their way out of the place. Strangely, when we left the stadium, people were staying in their cars, you know, breaking out the, the food they had there for, for, uh, for, for what not, and uh, that was probably a very good idea. Okay. Pete, thank you. We'll let you okay. uh, catch your breath here now uh, as well. We have to uh, late report that the Amtrak, uh, inbound Amtrak, the California Zephyr, uh, Zephyr has been stopped in Sacramento, so it will not uh, be headed to Oakland, obviously. We have a late word now from the seismology lab in Berkeley, and we'll go to Willie Monroe there. Willie? Well, Don, not much new to report here. As a matter of fact, uh, here they are very certain that it's uh, at least 7.0 on the Richter scale. I've heard reports of uh, as much as 6.9, but they've uh, pretty much determined it's 7.0 right here. One caveat, though, they still have to uh, assign a magnitude to the earthquake on the basis of a review of all the California seismology stations that are reporting because uh, the equipment here, after 6.5 on the Richter scale, tends not to be quite as accurate. And so you have to kind of look at... Uh, what's going on. So that may change. It may, in fact, be less than 7.0. Right now, at the seismology station at uh, UC Berkeley, they're saying it's 7.0. Basically, uh, they're saying you expect hundreds of aftershocks. Uh, again, nothing, uh, the l very low probability of something in the magnitude of what we felt for the first initial shock, but perhaps as high as five on the Richter scale. But uh, as the days go on, the hours go on, uh, that possibility diminishes as well. That's the situation here at the UC Seismology Lab. They're going over their charts and they're uh, working uh, diligently in their laboratory. They're getting ready to go to the scene, the epicenter, to try to get a good look at uh, what's happened there. They expect that they will actually be able to see 
physically on the surface of the ground uh, a break uh, as much as uh, three to five feet because they believe that the actual earthquake itself has uh, created a separation of uh, some 30 kilometers underground. Yes, well, it was in the same area. Apparently, I believe it's the Lake Elsador area, and we're double-checking that is where the uh, epicenter is. Is that correct? Is that the information you have? Well, the information I have is basically uh, 10 miles northeast Santa Cruz, 20 miles south of San Jose. I don't really have a map to... Uh, yeah, it's to an area that uh, has had movement before as well, and of course, so some of the uh, uh, some of the areas nearby there, uh, Hollister and so on, would uh, obviously suffer damage uh, near the epicenter. Well, there was uh, another earthquake uh, here August 8th, and there was a magnitude 5.4, and this was a general the same region, so that's yes. uh, basically what we're talking about. And that's new information, though, upgrading that to 7.0. Okay, William Monroe, we thank you. Let's go now to the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, uh, Channel 7's Carol Ivey, with uh, a lot of traffic, obviously. Carol? Don, what you're looking at is traffic moving slowly but surely across the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. I am at the east end of the bridge. We just arrived here. If you can see behind me, what's happening is the power is completely out on the bridge, but it is open and moving. People are not being charged tolls. If you need to get to Marin County from the East Bay, this is the way to go. In fact, if you need to get anywhere from the East Bay to the rest of the Bay Area, this may be the way to go. I talked to a structural engineer inside the, the bridge office just moments ago. She told me that the bridge, despite earlier reports, never was shut today. I also want to tell you that we have made extensive checks in Marin County. The power is out in most of the county, but thankfully there are no fatalities and no serious injuries. One sheriff's deputy said to me, we're very, very lucky here in the North Bay. There seem to be no major problems. We've been hearing minor reports of gas smells, but again, maybe some of the little good news that I can report here from the North Bay is that Marin County seems to have survived this earthquake very well. And again, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge is open is open and has remained open throughout this earthquake crisis. This is the way to get to other parts of the Bay Area if you have to. Don? All right, Carol. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, obviously, uh, it's going to be a very difficult for a uh, commute for uh, people to get uh, home to the East Bay tonight, but uh, we understand that uh, that bridge and also the ones south of the Bay Bridge uh, will be open, we hope. Uh, now, we'll go back to the Marina District. As we told you earlier, this is obviously an area that has been very hard hit. Uh, fire crews uh, coming into this, this inferno as uh, apartment buildings collapsed. Remember, the Marina District uh, was filled for, uh, uh, is landfill, and therefore a number of the very expensive apartments and townhouses in this area have collapsed, fire burning unchecked. Uh, they're trying, uh, it's been very difficult. There have been some injuries, it appears. Uh, some people perhaps more panicked than anything else as they try to evacuate them from the homes, but the fire burns on San Francisco's Marina District and Inferno. We're painting on the second floor, and uh, it, everything just starts shaking, and it's a plaster and lath building, and just whole sheets of plaster were coming off the ceiling and the walls. And um, I was in the bathroom painting, Randy was in the living room, I ran to the uh, bathroom door and stood there, and he was trying to get into a doorway, and the floor was falling at such an angle that it made him fall down. There had been a courtyard in the backyard, and all the rubble and the, the pipes from the boiler all had fallen over, so we had to crawl over. And I held the baby so we could crawl over and hand the baby from one to another so we could crawl across the, the, all the debris in the back. Again, you see the Marina District, uh, the Jefferson Divisadero area, where these uh, these very expensive buildings have collapsed, and the fire continues as the uh, San Francisco Fire Department tries to fight it. This was this was a four-story building, and that's the kind of problem they are trying to evacuate people who may have been inside. A lot of people at home at that time or during the commute hour, as uh, the earthquake struck at uh, 5:04 uh, this afternoon in. Northern California. We have uh, an unofficial word, or it, it perhaps is official now, uh, seven people, uh, we uh, know seven people have died uh, uh, in this crash, including the one, or in this quake rather, uh, including the one when an old building south of Market uh, collapsed on uh, people in automobiles. And uh, there is one other death too, uh, perhaps one on the Bay Bridge when that section of it uh, collapsed. But uh, here trying to get people uh, out of their homes, some injuries, uh, perhaps just uh, panic as well. And uh, this, if it indeed is uh, the big one that uh, we've heard so much about, and uh, people trying to, uh, to do whatever they can to stop the fire. But part of the problem, obviously, is, uh, is gas. Electricity 
ready, store water, prepare for aftershocks, prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. Standing here ain't doing nothing. And uh, it's dark now. Indeed, uh, there is a problem with uh, water pipes bursting all over uh, Northern California. People are on the streets. They're not going home. There is gridlock traffic-wise while people try to get across the Golden Gate Bridge, which apparently is okay, although 19th Avenue, one of the approaches to the Golden Gate Bridge, is closed because uh, one of the lanes there has uh, apparently collapsed. Go uh, prepare yourselves! Prepare yourselves! Shut off the gas! Shut off electricity! Store water in your bathtub! Don't expect services for 72 hours! All right, that is a, a warning from uh, police, and that is uh, part of the problem here, that we have no electricity, uh, there's no power, the city virtually dark at this hour, perhaps illuminated only by that monstrous fire in the Marina District. Uh, sewer lines have collapsed, water lines uh, are also torn apart. Uh, they're advising to stock up, as you heard, uh, on, uh, on bottled water. 280 uh, the freeway is closed in San Francisco. Uh, San Mateo Bridge, uh, we'll find out the latest there, because that's certainly one of the accesses to the uh, East Bay. Here's Lisa Stark. Lisa? Well, we were at the San Mateo Bridge earlier, Don, and I can tell you it was closed at that time. I do not know if it is still closed. I am sorry because at this point we have moved north to the Amfac Hotel in Burlingame. The hotel is behind me. What you can see is what is left of the elevator shaft of this 10-story hotel, a 25-year-old hotel. Apparently what happened is a 1,500-gallon water tank on the roof sheared off when the quake hit. It hit the elevator shaft, took the shaft and the elevator down with it. I can tell you no one was in the elevator apparently at the time. A very good stroke of good luck and in fact there were no major injuries here. Uh, meeting at the hotel were 500 delegates from the California State Baptist Convention. They are all okay. They want me to send word out to their loved ones tonight, to their family, to their friends, that they all escaped just fine. The hotel has been evacuated. As you can well imagine, there's extensive damage. Not all right, let me just uh, fill in for you. We have been listening in and, and viewing as uh, KGO in San Francisco, our station out in San Francisco, as their reporters uh, are trying to bring the, uh, trying to bring the uh, viewers of the Bay Area up to date on what is happening. Let's go back now to that report. Which are still open, although there is no power in this area. All of the hotels here are dark. Electricity is out here as it is in most other places. And I'm standing on Bayshore Boulevard in front of the hotel. Much of the road is closed. A few cars are getting through uh, southbound, but the road is completely blocked off northbound. Uh, we did uh, see one gentleman taken away in an ambulance from here. He was not seriously hurt, but he apparently fell and suffered bruises and contusions. He has been taken to the hospital. But again, here at the Amfac Hotel, again, major damage to the front of this hotel as the elevator shaft collapsed after it was hit by the water gallon tank, a 1,500-gallon uh, tank filled with water, which came crashing down when the earthquake hit. And that is the latest from here in Burlingame. All right, Lisa Stark, if you are just joining us, I'm Don Sanchez in the uh, KGO TV newsroom in San Francisco. A major earthquake struck today in Northern California. It uh, apparently registered seven on the Richter scale. That is the latest number. It struck at 5.04. Of course, it caused uh, cancellation of the third game of the World Series. The epicenter was 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz, located on the San Andreas Fault at the intersection of the Sargent Fault. Uh, and uh, that's the same epicenter as a quake in August that registered 5.4 and also the same area where there was a quake uh, June 27th, 1988 in the uh, Lake Elspin quake area and that registered 5.7. San Francisco city government now is operating at 1003 Turk Street. Uh, nothing in City Hall at this point, 1003 Turk Street. Uh, the biggest damage or the most visible are several places, the Bay Bridge and also the Marina District of San Francisco. The Marina built on landfill. All right, we have been listening in, as I said a moment ago, to Don Sanchez and other members of the KGO news crew as they they begin to pull together some of the information that is coming in from all over the Bay Area. Let me perform one small public service here right now. AT&T reports that uh, there has been an absolute surge of phone calls going into San Francisco, over a million phone calls uh, in one five-minute period. You can imagine what that is doing to already overtaxed phone lines. 
uh, and AT&T is asking, and I hope you'll agree that it makes some sense, that you not call into San Francisco, but rather allow those people in San Francisco to call out. They're the ones with the information. We can understand that a great many of you are concerned about friends, loved ones, uh, and relatives in the San Francisco area, in the area of Santa Cruz and San Jose and Hollister, all down that San Andreas Fault from San Francisco down to San Jose. Uh, clearly, there has been significant damage tonight. At the moment, we are hearing that at least seven people have been killed, but I'm sure uh, that is merely a preliminary report at this time. Uh, what we're hearing and seeing, uh, and as far as the seeing goes, we've been pulling together sort of a package of some of the highlights of what has been coming in over the past few minutes. Maybe we should take a look at that right now. Uh, it's clearly daylight here, so obviously this was shot at least two or three hours ago. It is now nighttime in San Francisco. Uh, and the fact of the matter is that among the other things that have happened that were not visible to us when we were looking at some of these early shots of buckled highways, uh, among the most serious things that have happened is that all the services are out. And perhaps the most dramatic piece of videotape you're going to see uh, tonight uh, in addition to the, the fire that we've been looking at is that view of the Bay Bridge which connects Oakland to San Francisco. As you can see, a fairly significant section, about a 30 to 50 foot section of the upper level collapsed on the lower level. Uh, we believe that there was one fatality connected with that crash, but what it has done that will have uh, an enormously far-reaching effect on the residents both of Oakland and San Francisco is that it has closed down perhaps the most used bridge between those two segments. The San Mateo Bridge, for those of you who are familiar with that area, that's down a little bit further south of this particular area, has also been closed down. I'm not sure at this point whether it has been closed because it had to be or because engineers want to check it out before they allow vehicular traffic back onto that bridge again. But uh, one of the most dramatic pieces pieces of, of audio that we heard, and if you were watching us five or ten minutes ago, you will have seen uh, a uniformed, I'm not sure if he was a fireman or a policeman, uh, who was warning people in one of the uh, neighborhoods of San Francisco, the marina area where this enormous fire is blazing. You've got about 90 minutes of daylight left. That clearly was a couple of hours ago. Do what you have to do and do it right now because prepare for three days of no services. And that was repeated a little bit later on. 72 hours of no services. By that, I am sure they mean gas and water and electricity and telephones. All right, we're now going to go to Christy Welter at San Jose Hospital for a status report there. Christy? This is Christy Welter at San Jose Medical Center, and we have had four patients in tonight one of whom just died of cardiac arrest. The others are victims of things falling on them, and at this point, we're not sure of their condition. We have been told to expect some other patients. Uh, there are, we're a trauma center, so we're obviously on call 24 hours a day. There is one hospital that we have been told has structural damage and may have to evacuate some patients, but we have not been, you know, con it's not been confirmed when or how many. Christy, can you give us some sense of overall what conditions are in San Jose? I mean, uh, did the uh, did the earthquake uh, strike heavily there? Were there aftershocks? How long did it last? And do you have any sense of what kind of damage there is throughout the city? There's a lot of damage in stores. I was at a meeting when it happened away from the, the medical center, and as I left, there was no electricity there, and there were people in an elevator that they were trying to extricate. Uh, all the stoplights are out. Most businesses have closed because things have fallen off their shelves. Christy, let me interrupt you just for one minute because we're looking at a map that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're talking about right now. You're in San Jose, which is some miles south of the area we were looking at right now. Go ahead, please. Yes. San Jose has 15 cities in the county, and some of the main arteries are now closed, so people are still trying to get home. They've been told not to use phones and not to, to get home and turn off electricity and gas and water. And many of them are panicked because they can't reach their loved ones. All right. Do you have any, uh, I don't know if you've gotten any more information than uh, has been available up north of you in terms of the number of casualties. I know you spoke of uh, the people who have come into that medical center there. And we've uh, had only one death, fortunately. 
And do you have any sense of what's happening in the rest of the city? Have you heard anything? Are the radio stations still operating? My understanding is that our death may be the only one in the county at this point. Well, that is, in fact, good news. What, about, good what, news. what about damage to, uh, to buildings? Unbelievable damage to some of the buildings. Most buildings, as far as we know, there are none that have fallen, but the interior damage, stores and the shelves, things of that sort, uh, have certainly toppled. Gas stations have closed because of the, the risk of fire from gasoline. All right, Christy Welder, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I know you have many more important things to attend to right now, so thanks for sharing some of that information with us. Also on the line is Richard Eisner uh, of the Bay Area Earthquake Preparedness Project. Uh, Mr. Eisner, what new information do you bring us? Well, we, we are getting the same reports as you are of ex extensive damage in the South Bay as well as fires in San Francisco and the collapse of a freeway structure in Oakland. This is a, an earthquake, in fact, that was mentioned earlier that we've had two earthquakes, one a year ago and one this last August, that we thought possibly could be foreshocks, and it turned out that, in fact, those earthquakes indicated that stress was building to the point that we could have a great quake. Can you just tell us, Mr. Eisner, is there anything we should be looking for right now? Are, are there any signs that, that you, as an experienced observer of earthquakes, can point to and say, this is what is likely to happen, that is more aftershocks, or have we seen the worst of it now? Well, this probably, in all likelihood, was the, the, the main event. This was the large quake, a, a Richter 7 magnitude on that segment of the fault is probably as large as that segment could generate. But we could expect aftershocks in the Richter 5 to 6 range, in all likelihood, they will occur over the next several days and weeks. Uh, but the problem right now is just dealing with the life-saving, getting people out of collapsed buildings, and uh, getting the situation stabilized. All right, Mr. Eisner, thank you very much. Uh, what you're looking at right now, which doesn't look like much of a picture, because as we have been telling you repeatedly, uh, the electricity, the power is out in San Francisco. But that is San Francisco down below, uh, as shot from the Goodyear blimp. And the commander of the blimp is Captain John Creighton. Captain Creighton, can you hear me? And, and uh, what can you see with the naked eye that perhaps we are not seeing quite as well with the camera at this time of night? Captain Creighton? Captain, we see you, but we don't hear you. There, there we go. Go ahead. From the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia. We're over San Francisco, and we just got a report from the San Francisco Tower that they've done quite a bit of damage there. Also, we were over the Bay Bridge when it collapsed. We were listening to the rescue helicopters by the Coast Guard. We understand that three people were evacuated by helicopter from the Bay Bridge, and they are now addressing. Maybe you can give us a little bit of information based on what you've been not only seeing, but also what you have been hearing on some of those emergency channels. What else do you know about what's going on? Captain, I'm sorry, we, we didn't hear you just then. Uh, I, I realize I've got to stop talking before you can start talking, but go ahead. Captain Creighton? Three, four, five. This is John Creighton talking. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you now. Well, actually, we can't hear you right now. All right. We have someone from the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Forgive me, sir. I didn't catch your name as it was being fed to me over my earpiece. Mr. Mr. Estep, um, you're right here in Washington with me. Uh, I, I, let me just mention a few things that I've noticed during the course of the, uh, of the evening's coverage and then have you comment on them. One of the reporters from KGO uh, was talking about having driven through the streets of San Francisco and smelling gas uh, at just about every intersection. It sounds ominous. Uh, tell me how, how severely that should be viewed. I think at this point, uh, the San Francisco Fire Department obviously is in a disaster response mode. And probably at this point, there's a great deal of assessment going on to actually determine the scope of the emergency. From the signs that we see, we obviously know that there are, there is a widespread, uh, there are widespread fires and other emergency medical incidents have occurred. Obviously, uh, with a quake of this magnitude, you could have ruptured gas lines. You could also have your water supply cut off. Uh, 
we've all had difficulty getting in. As a matter of fact, the chief of the San Francisco Fire Department is in Boston preparing to return to San Francisco now. And uh, I was due to meet with him tomorrow, and we've been in touch with him. The only thing he's been able to determine is that his family is okay. So communications right now is a very difficult thing out of there. All right. Again, I know uh, you are being cautious, and it's, it's commendable. I just want to get some sense uh, of what it is that those, that those ruptured gas mains mean in terms of what the fire department and what emergency squads are going to be able to do. How do you, when it is pitch black out there, uh, when there has been a great deal of damage and there are a number of fires, how do you cap those gas lines? Well, that would be a very difficult situation uh, to do. In some cases, if there were no buildings exposing uh, where those uh, mains were burning, you would let them burn. Uh, you certainly would not want to put that fire out if uh, the gas was going to continue. Chief, uh, forgive yes. me for interrupting you, but we have apparently some late-breaking developments out at uh, KGO, so we switch back now to our affiliate out in San Francisco, KGO. Oakland and Berkeley, and of course, in San Francisco, the hardest hit right now that we are aware of is the Marina District, where several buildings fell on the Divisadero Street area, and people were roaming in the streets, and a very, very terrifying situation right now. Uh, we had reports from people who were on the Bay Bridge at the time that section of the bridge collapsed on the upper deck. Two women told me that they saw a man they were in their cars heading to San Francisco from Oakland. They saw a man on a motorcycle waving madly at them and they thought that he was just a little crazed or something. Then they saw all the traffic slowing down. Then they saw a mass of people running, running their way, trying to get out of harm's way. So apparently when they were in the car, they had felt, they thought they had a flat tire. Many, many other people did. The folks just left their cars on the bridge, locked them up and ran into San Francisco. I have with me right now, Dan Levitt. You are out at Candlestick, Game 3 of the World Series. That isn't happening now, Dan. No, it's not, and uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly what the um, method or what the operation will be here now as far as the World Series goes, period. It, at 5.04, I was standing outside of the stadium uh, in the van, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the Channel 7 vans. It started moving, and obviously I thought somebody was playing around with me and so I jumped out of the van as I jumped out I saw the entire parking lot moving like this I looked up at the structures uh, in the stadium itself the light standards were moving uh, it was at that time that uh, Eric Christensen my producer and we took off and, and tried to get a hold of uh, some authorities uh, and we first one we could get to of course was the commissioner of baseball who was waiting in his box on the uh, first base side waiting to see if he could get some word and we finally got it from him and this was it Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are postponing the game because there is no power in the stadium. We would like you to leave in an orderly way. I don't believe there's any great danger, but we have no idea when the power is going to be on, and we have to get people out of here before it gets dark. So if you'll leave in an orderly way while there's still light, I think everybody can leave in a graceful fashion. Please leave. The game has been postponed. There'll be no baseball tonight. Thank you. A few words? Do you know the extent of what's happened so far? No, not all I have at this point is I talked to our operations center. They say that there is a building with partial damage at 6th and Brannan. There's also a building with uh, partial collapse around Turk and Fillmore, and that there is some structural damage to the Hall of Justice. I'm going to be leaving the ballpark now to go down to the Hall of Justice while they're continuing to get an estimate around the city of any kind of damage, and then we'll make a determination there as to what's to be done. But our command post will be located at Northern Police Station at Turk and Fillmore. What may be the uh, understatement of the night, that announcement by uh, Faye Vincent, the commissioner of baseball, that there will be no baseball tonight. Uh, the question is when, uh, if at all, there will be baseball again in the, in the Bay Area in the very near future because we have already heard now, albeit indirectly, uh, that they may be without power in the Bay Area for as much as 72 hours, still standing by here in Washington. Uh, Chief Estep, uh, you were just in the process of explaining to me how they are going to contain uh, some of those gas leaks, which, which may in fact prove to be the greatest danger of the night in San Francisco, right? That's right. Uh, again, Ted, if, if uh, the situation is not life-threatening, uh, they may just let those burn in, in respect to those means. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, at, uh, even while you were talking, I'm, I'm getting more information in my ear. I understand that there is a fire commissioner from San Francisco, Frank Quinn, who is standing by at our studio in Los Angeles. Uh, commissioner Quinn, what can you add to, uh, perhaps you could put into some kind of...
Go ahead, sir. I'm uh, trying to get through to our headquarters right now. I happen to be in Los Angeles discussing earthquake preparedness when this occurred, and the chief here uh, is offering help, but we're trying to get through to the San Francisco office, and I'm going to have to hang up so I can talk to San Francisco. All right, can I ask you one question very sure. quickly? Uh, apparently, I mean, we're hearing men on the ground who are going through the streets and who are urging residents of San Francisco to prepare for all the services being out for at least 72 hours. Is that one of the first things that you do is turn off the gas everywhere, for example? Yes, that's right. That's and right. Gas is a major problem. It was in 1906, and it is uh, today. And I've seen pictures on TV that uh, remind me of 1906, the photographs I've seen then. So we can assume that, period, the gas is being turned off. What about the electricity, uh, the in water? In areas where wires are down, and I suspect it's throughout the entire city, uh, it will be turned off. All right, Commissioner Quinn, I know you have far more important things to do. Thank you for sharing even Thank a couple you, of minutes with us. Thank you, sir. All right, let me uh, try and set the, uh, the evening for you a little bit. Those of you, perhaps, who are just joining us uh, and who were hoping to see the last couple of innings of Game 3 of the World Series, you should know that did not happen tonight because even as the World Series was about to begin, an earthquake struck. Uh, not merely the San Francisco area. That uh, apparently is about, oh, 40 or 50 miles north of the epicenter of this earthquake. We have yet to get some of the news from the areas that may have been hardest hit, but what you're looking at here uh, is a segment of the upper level of the Bay Bridge that connects Oakland uh, and San Francisco. There you're looking at uh, one of the highways which looks to be fairly badly buckled uh, from this high shot. You can see what looks to be a segment of collapsed highway there. Uh, there has been one particularly bad fire. Again, you'll see these folks are sort of laughing and jumping around as though it were a relatively minor affair and to them at the moment it may have been uh, but San Francisco has been rather badly hit and that fire which we have been watching now for most of the night because uh, if only because it's the it's the only piece of major light that you can see in San Francisco right now that video taped earlier from the Goodyear blimp is a fire uh, in the marina section of San Francisco, a residential area, and even though you see water being poured on the fire right now, I am told that later on they stopped the water because they were afraid that in dousing the fire uh, they were going to create noxious fumes because it's believed that that fire began uh, from a ruptured gas pipe. And that, at the moment, is one of the great concerns in and around the San Francisco area. Uh, that where you have, and we heard uh, one of our colleagues from KGO in San Francisco talking about the smell of gas. There's a shot that was taken earlier this evening uh, at Candlestick Park, and you can see uh, that there are pieces of, uh, of cement block. Uh, this is now that area in the marina area. These pieces of tape sort of randomly edited together so that we can give you an overview of what's been happening. You can see what's happened to the houses there and the, the one house about a half a block away just totally destroyed. Uh, and it was in that section of San Francisco uh, that uh, members of the uh, fire department and the police were walking around warning residents uh, to make the most of the daylight area. Uh, of the daylight that was left about 90 minutes or so because uh, the essential the services area, were going to be cut uh, off. That is, gas was going to be cut off, water was going to be cut off, electricity was going to be cut off, and it may be that much of San Francisco will not have any of those essential services for as much as the next three days. We're going to uh, tell our local affiliates now that we're going to be staying on the air through the local news. Obviously, local stations will make their own decisions as to how much, if any, of this coverage that uh, they want to take. But we're going to be on the air through your local news and then into our regular nightline period at uh, 11.30 uh, East Coast. And uh, we will be on at 2.30 in the morning our time so that we're on live for the West Coast to give you a complete wrap-up of what has been happening throughout the evening and what is happening in terms of rescue operations and emergency operations. The Associated Press, incidentally, is now reporting that there are as many as 47 dead. But all of that, I must tell you, is all preliminary information. The biggest problem that everyone has on the West Coast right now in the Bay Area and down south into San Jose and Santa Cruz uh, is that information is A, hard to come by, 
Uh, and what's even more difficult is uh, the communication. Uh, the telephone systems are badly overburdened right now, once again. AT&T uh, asks that you not make calls into the Bay Area, into the San Francisco and uh, Oakland and Berkeley areas, because there are people there who are trying to make calls out. They have the information you don't. It may very well be that by calling in, you're preventing someone who has the information uh, from getting that information out. Now, we will be on the air live a little more than one half hour from now in our regular nightline period, and we will be on the air live for the West Coast for our nightline period, 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Pacific Time. We're going to give uh, our stations along the line uh, a breakaway signal so that you can go, those of you who want to, can go to your local news, uh, those of you who want to stay with us, and get a, a further sense of what is going on out there in the Bay Area, we will be keeping you up to date with all the information that comes to us as quickly as we get it. Once again, the Associated Press is reporting that 47 people have died in the earthquake, which hit the Bay Area and the area down the line of the San Andreas Fault, all the way down to Santa Cruz there with San Jose in the middle, uh, and uh, Hollister, California, that area has been badly hit from San Francisco south down to Santa Cruz. And uh, joining me now from the White House with some late information from the White House is our White House correspondent, Britt Hume. Britt? Uh, Ted, uh, I just talked to a senior White House official who told me that they have been able to get in touch with a couple of fire departments in those areas to the south of San Francisco, most hard hit in Santa Cruz. Uh, the fire department told them that there are some buildings down and others that look like they're going to go down. He said, however, that the information was sketchy because all of the fire department resources and people are out on the streets trying to do what they can. And that information apparently is similar to information that they've gotten from other areas uh, near San Jose. Uh, one other note, Ted, uh, Vice President Quayle was out on the West Coast today and uh, he is tonight in San Diego and has decided to stay over and uh, we'll do so uh, and await uh, a conversation in the morning with Transportation Secretary Skinner, who is leaving here in a matter of a uh, half hour or so to fly out there and get as close to the scene as he can before deciding whether he will go up uh, to tour the area or do whatever appears appropriate. So right. that is the latest here. I know you gave us some information earlier on uh, on uh, what FEMA is doing and on uh, the president's awareness of what's going on, but just sort of bring us up to speed again on uh, what the White House has been doing. Well, well, the, fr the president has gotten a, a report here uh, from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and, the Fed and, and, the, and FEMA has set up a command post and is in full operation tonight at its own headquarters, and will be coordinating whatever the federal government activities uh, that are decided upon. Uh, Governor Sununu has uh, uh, spoken to the Pentagon, and military officials there have authorized such help as FEMA may uh, uh, deem appropriate, and that will be forthcoming if and when it is needed. So what we have, uh, Ted, is a situation where there is uh, more of a readiness to act here than there is information upon which uh, to take those decisions. And as it comes in, I anticipate we're going to see a massive effort on, on the part of the federal government to try to help this situation. All right. Britt Hume, thank you very much. Let me just point out to our local stations in just a few seconds. It will be 11 o'clock Eastern time. Those of you who want to break away, please do. We will be here with more information for those who do not. This special report came to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule. On the Richter scale, rocked Northern California. ABC News, of course, has been keeping viewers apprised of the situation throughout the evening. We will rejoin them if there are any significant developments within the next half hour, and we will rejoin ABC at the conclusion of this broadcast. Allow us very simply uh, to recap some of the highlights. As we said, you have been hearing most of what has been going on for the past few hours. The quake centered in Santa Cruz, about 75 miles south of San Francisco. It caved in a section of the San Francisco Bay Bridge that connects San Francisco and Oakland, as you see. Fires uh, throughout San Francisco. Sidewalks, of course, cracked uh, by the force of that quake. An orderly uh, evacuation, really, from Candlestick Park. Game three of the World Series was canceled. Now, both stadiums in San Francisco and Oakland must be examined before any decision is made on continuing the series. There have been a number of major fires throughout San Francisco. One report of at least six, perhaps seven people dead in San Francisco. Those people trapped in cars on which a building collapsed. 
Also on the tonight uh, reports that a shopping mall collapsed in San Jose. No confirmation on that. I know we have been talking to uh, to some people here who have been trying to get in touch with relatives. I know I don't know if we have her on the line yet, but uh, I know we have been talking to some people tonight. We had done talk to a Mrs. Ruth Cleveland from Hamlin. Her daughter Susan works in uh, San Mateo near the epicenter, and she reports to us that her daughter is fine. She just called us up to say she did get through to her. Of course, all the phone lines are down. A lot of them are okay, down. I believe we have her on the line now. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Yes, go right ahead. Uh, uh, Susie works in, uh, she's a psychologist in a in uh, a vocational center for uh, a disabled uh, adults in San Mateo. Mm -hmm. well, what has she been able to tell you tonight? In well, uh, what's uh, oddly enough, she gets out at five o'clock, but today she uh, took off early to mm. go to the uh, San Francisco University Library, and she was on the third floor when it hit. And uh, books kept flying out, and uh, everybody started running down. And she said you couldn't, she couldn't even hang on to the wall. They were shaking so badly. How is she, Mrs. Cleveland? How is she doing? She's fine. Uh, she cannot phone out. Mm -hmm. How were you able to get through to her? Uh, miracle, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and uh, at the present time, uh, all she's worried about is on her balcony. She lives in a two-story apartment uh, area, and uh, she has a balcony, and she loves flowers, and her flowers are all gone over the balcony, mm -hmm. and she's out running around for water, but she is safe, and my God, my husband and I have been going crazy for the last three or four three hours or four hours. Well, we know that is a comfort to you, and we thank you very much for calling us. You're welcome. Okay, and, and thank Give you. Give my for... regards to Dick Burke. Okay, <laughs> we'll we will. Do that. All right. We want to update, too, on to the latest from AP Now, saying at least 40 people were killed in a highway collapse in Oakland. There are fears that more people could be in the rubble. So, obviously, as this night unfolds, mm -hmm. we're going to find out more about it. We'll rejoin the network whenever it dictates, and, of course, I'll give you a full report at 1130. In other news... As many as 40 people killed in their cars as an Oakland highway collapses. And in San Francisco tonight, electricity is out, there are gas leaks, and dozens of fires. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel in Washington, and this is Nightline. What we're going to be doing tonight, obviously, is a continuation of our story. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. What we're going to be doing is a little bit fragmented this evening, as I hope you can understand. We have been covering this story all evening long. I'm going to go now immediately to uh, my colleague, Sydney Kohara, out at KGO in San Francisco, uh, and have her bring you up to date on what is happening out there. Sydney? Hello, Ted. Um, I, can, I can see you, but I can't exactly hear you at this particular point. But what I want to do right now is just kind of go through, even though I don't know if you're asking me questions, I'll let you know what we, what we do know at this point. I wish I could tell you, I wish I had better news at this particular time, but the news I'm getting at, at this time is grim. What we're looking at now, um, I told you a little bit of earlier about the uh, I-880. That is a part of a freeway in Oakland that collapsed on top of another part of that freeway. Freeway, we are looking at 40 to 50 dead in that particular accident. Um, we had 30 to 40 ambulances going through that area. This is in Oakland across the bay. Now, this isn't counting the Bay Bridge accident. Uh, we know that there is one confirmed dead there. We also had in San Francisco, there are seven confirmed dead uh, uh, south of Market, which is just to the south part of the Bay Bridge that comes into the city. Also, you know that there was the huge fire in the Marina District, which is uh, uh, very close to the Golden Gate Bridge. It is between the Golden Gate Bridge and the downtown area. There is a huge fire there. They have uh, no word of fatalities. What you're looking at now is some videotape a little bit earlier of that spectacular fire in the Marina District. Uh, earlier when we talked, I couldn't really tell you why I thought those buildings uh, had collapsed when I was in a six-story building not but a mile away. And 
things seem to be fine. What I understand now is that part of the city, the Marina District, uh, very close to the Golden Gate Bridge, is built on a landfill, so it's not very stable. Those buildings would, I assume, be the first to collapse. Uh, the scary part, too, is a lot of problems with some uh, natural gas in that area. Uh, I understand that throughout the streets of San Francisco, there is a very heavy smell, smell of natural gas, and there are people that are still walking around a little bit uh, dazed, uh, not sure what to do. It, it's particularly frightening, too, in that area because there, uh, while there are a lot of, uh, it's a so-called yuppie neighborhood, there are a lot of elderly people that live there. So, um, unfortunately, I would imagine that the death toll is going to go higher in that area until they can finally get some uh, crews in there and they can figure out, uh, just uh, get all the people accounted for at this time. But we do know that there are 40 to 50 confirmed dead now on the I-880, the Nimitz Freeway in Oakland. All right, Sydney, can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you, Ted. All right, very good. Thank you very much. We may be coming back to you a little bit later. That, incidentally, we're looking right now at the Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland and San Francisco. And uh, those of you who are just joining us, we have shown this several times during the course of the evening. You can see where a segment of the upper level of that bridge literally collapsed onto the lower segment. There, uh, I assume that's in downtown San Francisco. We're looking uh, at... Uh, one of the uh, major department stores there, I Magnum, and you can see that there has been tremendous uh, damage with shattered glass. Uh, but uh, perhaps the best way to give you a sense of what has been happening is not just to show you the pictures, but let you see the faces and hear the voices of San Franciscans and Bay Area residents and how they have reacted to today's earthquake in San Francisco attempted to drive over this 50-foot gap in the Bay Bridge. It has been like a drama here. It has been dangling from the edge, the precipice behind me, and these folks are just getting rescued right now. It's been about an hour-long effort. It's been a frightening scene here. As you can see just below me is where this crack in the Bay Bridge occurred, a 50-foot section. You see down there below the two cars, two cars that were on the upper deck when the bridge collapsed. They fell below. We understand that the people in both of those cars did get out safely. I'm at the corner of Jefferson and Divisadero. You can see this building is collapsed. They don't know if people are still in there or if they aren't. You can see the fire down past me. Uh, what has happened is that the natural gas lines have ruptured, and that is what has caused that fire. The water lines have ruptured. There is no water coming out of the fire hydrants. People are running into this building that Randy's now showing you, and they are looking for people. They're asking for people to come by. They're saying that people are still trapped in there. We were down at two, so number two, Cervantes. Another building like this one had collapsed. I was had two deaths confirmed there. We'll go back to the Marina District. As we told you earlier, this is obviously an area that has been very hard hit. Uh, fire crews uh, coming into this, this inferno as uh, apartment buildings collapsed. Remember, the Marina District uh, was filled for, uh, uh, is landfill, and therefore a number of the very expensive apartments and townhouses in this area have collapsed, fire burning unchecked. Uh, they're trying, uh, it's been very difficult. There have been some injuries, it appears. Uh, perhaps more panic than anything else as they try to evacuate them from the homes, but the fire burns on San Francisco's Marina District and Inferno. We're painting on the second floor and uh, it, everything just starts shaking and it's a plaster and lath building and just whole sheets of plaster were coming off the ceiling and the walls and um, I was in the bathroom painting, Randy was in the living room I ran to the uh, bathroom door and stood there, and he was trying to get into a doorway, and the floor was falling at such an angle that it, it made him fall down. Again, you see the Marina District, uh, the Jefferson Divisadero area, where these uh, these very expensive buildings have collapsed, and the fire continues as uh, San Francisco Fire Department tries to fight it. This was. This was a four-story building, and that's the kind of problem they are trying to evacuate people who may have been inside. A lot of people at home at that time or during the commute hour as uh, the earthquake struck at uh, 5.04 uh, this afternoon in Northern California. We have uh, an unofficial word, or it perhaps is official now, uh, seven people, uh, we know seven people have died uh, uh, in this crash, including the one, or in this quake rather, uh, including the one when an old building south of Market uh, collapsed on uh, people in automobiles. And uh, there is one other death too, uh, perhaps one on the Bay Bridge when that section of it uh, collapsed. 
but uh, here trying to get people uh, out of their homes, some injuries, uh, perhaps just uh, panic as well. And uh, this, if it indeed is uh, the big one that uh, we've heard so much about, and uh, people trying to, uh, to do whatever they can to stop the fire, but part of the problem, obviously, is, uh, is gas. Store water, prepare for aftershocks, prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. Standing here ain't doing nothing. It's looking bad over here in Oakland. The electricity is out in much of the city, and we have a bad freeway collapse. It's that ramp of the Nimitz Freeway that goes from Cypress, St Cypress Street on up to the Bay Bridge. About a six or seven block stretch of it collapsed during the earthquake. There have been ambulances going in and out of here all evening long. We understand as many as 30 or 40 ambulances, and preliminary reports right now are that there may be as many as eight to 40 dead. Eight to 40 dead. Many other Others injured. Uh, this again is a stretch of the freeway. The upper ramp collapsed onto the lower ramp. And we understand that uh, the columns gave way. Those columns began to crumble and sway, and the freeway collapsed down. We're waiting to get in a little closer and get some official word for you, but it is a disastrous scene over here in Oakland. Now, what you've been looking at, of course, is a compilation of some of the reporting that's been done by our colleagues out at KGO in San Francisco, anchors and reporters on the scene, and some of the information is already dated, as we now know that well over 50 people appear to have died just in the Bay Area alone, in that one area uh, of that ramp of the highway, Highway 880, leading onto the Bay Bridge. The collapse of that highway alone appears to have cost as many as 40 dead. All of this didn't begin, but we became aware of it in most of the country when we were watching what we thought was going to be the beginning of the third game of the World Series between the Oakland Athletics and the San Francisco Giants. And we saw my uh, colleague, uh, Al Michaels, who was just about to begin the coverage of that game when suddenly, Al Michaels, you're standing by now out at, uh, where are you, Al? I, I'm sorry, I'm you and I have been talking all evening, but I'm not, sure, I'm not quite sure where you are at the moment. I'm uh, right outside our, our production truck right next to Candlestick Park. All right, so there you were at Candlestick Park, ready to do your usual fine job of, of bringing us the game. And no game tonight because uh, things just got out of control very, very quickly. Tell us what happened, would you? Well, we, we talked about this earlier, Ted. I can't stress how, how lucky and how fortunate uh, we were to avert uh, a major, major disaster. The fact that the epicenter was not that close to Candlestick Park, I think, uh, precluded the possibility of that sort of disaster. 60,000 people, roughly maybe a few less than that at that hour since the game wouldn't have started for another 20 minutes or so. We're very orderly. As I mentioned, uh, uh, most of us, and I include myself, who have lived in California for a number of years, knew exactly what it was. Uh, we knew that we had withstood it. And certainly uh, there was sort of an air of wryness or what have you uh, immediately following the, uh, the quake. Nobody, of course, had any idea that part of the Bay Bridge was down or that there were deaths or anything like that. Uh, nobody had any idea in terms of what the, the extent of this disaster was. And so people 15 or 20 minutes after the game, when I was walking around on the ramp, uh, were talking about uh, what time the game would start and how well the Giants would do. And, of course, all of that seems very trivial right now. All right. Now... Uh um, Al, I understand that you have the commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, with you. Uh, maybe he can tell us now uh, how quickly and how easily that decision was made uh, to say, folks, this game is off. In other words, in those first few moments, the information must have been very confusing. Perhaps uh, he could tell us about this evening from his point of view. I'll have to relate that. Door. Can you hear Ted? Okay, go ahead. Well, we made the decision reasonably quickly because we had information that the power was out in the entire city and that uh, it would be difficult to know how long it would be before the power would be restored. So my point of view, the critical factor was getting people out of the stadium during daylight before darkness set in. And uh, I made the decision reasonably quickly on the basis of that fact alone. I know that uh, just a couple of hours ago, you were being asked, Commissioner, whether there could be uh, another game in the World Series tomorrow, and at that point you were being very cautious and, and examining, given what you now know about what's happening in the Bay Area, is it safe to assume that this World Series is going to be postponed for a while? Well, again, I, I still don't know enough. Uh, I learned more from just hearing Al in the last uh, 
minute or two than I had heard uh, for the last hour. I would think it is uh, unlikely, but it's premature because uh, we have agreed to meet tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock with representatives from the government, from the mayor, and from uh, the state. And I think at that point we'll get more facts, good intelligence as to uh, how difficult it would be to play uh, tomorrow night. Certainly on the basis of what I know now, it seems uh, unlikely, but we won't really know until tomorrow morning. Al Michaels, forgive my presumption. Uh, here I've got one of the one of the greatest uh, baseball experts in the country, and I'm trying to interview the commissioner. You go right ahead and, and ask whatever you think is relevant, and uh, and then we'll move on. Well, the the only thing, uh, and again, this is frankly uh, quite trivial right now in light of the the magnitude of the disaster. Uh, knowing that the, the Bay Bridge is down and we don't know how long it will be down, I mentioned that is the, the primary artery in the, in the Bay Area. Uh, sections of freeway are down. Uh, this area will definitely be gridlocked. Frankly, uh, Commissioner, I don't know how a game could possibly be played tomorrow. But assuming that the World Series uh, gets underway again, does the possibility exist that you would move the World Series to a neutral site? Well, again, it's, it's premature, isn't it? We don't know enough about what uh, the problems are in this community. I don't really know what the circumstances are in Oakland. Um, I don't know what damage there is to this facility here. We just don't know enough. I think uh, you're correct. The, the baseball game is not uh, one of the high priorities for this community. I, I will say, and I think you and I agreed, that uh, the people of this community can be very proud of the way the police, uh, the entire fan complement here, and everybody at this ballpark handled what could have been a very severe uh, crisis. I think uh, there were no low grades for any part of the performance tonight. All right. Uh, Al Michaels, Commissioner Vincent, let me thank you both very much. What we are going to do for the remainder of this program is precisely what the commissioner correctly uh, stated we need to do, and that is try to find as much information as we possibly can. And standing by in San Francisco to join us after this break is the Lieutenant Governor of California, uh, and we will be back with him in just a moment. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Infinity. Something that quite clearly uh, California has been bracing for for years, an earthquake of this magnitude. It's what you feared. It's what you've prepared for. Give us a sense of how those preparations are coming into play now. What is being done? Uh, and, uh, for example, in terms of uh, electricity backup, in terms of being able to uh, just sort out the information. That seems to be one of the biggest problems tonight. Nobody seems right. to know exactly what's going on. Right. The, 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 a lot of the communication systems were knocked out. Uh, in some places, there were good backup communication systems. Uh, a lot of the transportation uh, networks, uh, freeway systems, were severely damaged. Uh, the Bay Bridge you've already reported on. Two bridges going spanning the South Bay, San Mateo Hayward, and the Dumbarton bridges were closed for inspection. So, of course, cumulatively, all of that together caused a great deal of turmoil. I think we're in much better shape, more prepared to handle uh, a major calamity of this kind now than we have been in previous instances. We don't take this lightly. Uh, state and local agencies are trying very hard to communicate with each other. Certain parts of the communication systems were knocked out. Cellular systems, for instance, in parts of the Bay Area are not working. They've been knocked out. So it's tough for some command posts in, in some police stations to communicate with their officers in the field at, at uh, injury, uh, reported injury areas. Governor, I don't know if you can tell. We were just looking at a, at a high shot uh, that was videotaped earlier on of that uh, huge fire down in the marina area. Maybe you can just look up at your monitor and you'll see what I'm talking yeah. about there. We also saw yeah. some ground-level shots of that, and I was told that one of, the, one of the problems that the fire department is facing is that many of these fires are caused by ruptured gas lines. That's uh, right. What, what is being done... To, and uh, some of the reporters right there at KGO have been saying that as they go out in the streets, there is at almost every intersection a smell of gas. Now, you face what seems to me to be almost a paradox of a problem. On the one hand, you don't want to send people racing out of their homes and just going. They don't know where. On the That's other right. hand, is it safe for them to stay in San Francisco tonight? It is, and they ought to listen to radio broadcasts uh, as to whether they should move out of their homes. Right now, P 
people should stay in their homes, uh, not, not uh, compound the problems uh, in an already glutted transportation system. Uh, the fire department and the utility companies are out checking all broken gas lines, uh, doing the best they can to move very, very quickly. This was a heavy shake, 7.0. Those, uh, those entities are moving very, very quickly to, to try to seal up any gas leaks. We will warn people uh, with the help of the television and, and radio whether there are any danger points. Do you, have any, uh, do you have any figures right now on how many dead and how many injured? Any cumulative figures? The worst problem is, is the uh, freeway collapse over in the city of Oakland in the vicinity of 14th Street in Cyprus. Uh, I've been in contact with the Oakland Police Department three times tonight. Uh, they are waiting for an update from their command post uh, on site. I'm going to try to go over there in a few minutes myself. Uh, it's going to be very bad news. All right, Governor McCarthy, thank you very much. As more information becomes available, and if you are available a little later at night, we'll be here so that we can uh, disseminate some of the information that you and officials okay. working for you have. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay, Ted. I'll be back in a moment. You are connected to the car. The car is connected to an engine, a suspension system. The car fits in the road, which fits in the landscape. And when all of this, the will of the driver, the ability of the car, the feel of the road, when all of that... As the world was watching San Francisco for the beginning of the third game of the World Series. That game, among other things, has been canceled tonight. San Francisco is a city without power. Uh, Oakland, California, does have its power restored, but there have been some bad accidents in Oakland. Collapse of a highway, which has killed perhaps as many as 40 people. All in all, there are at least 50 people dead, but that is a very early figure and will probably have to be updated many, many times as information comes in from as far south as San Jose and Santa Cruz all the way up north to the San Francisco immediate Bay Area. Standing by with us right now uh, here in Washington is Grant Peterson, the Associate Director of FEMA, uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Uh, he is joining us from their headquarters here in Washington. Mr. Peterson, I gather you are the point man and once again when disaster strikes FEMA is probably the point agency. What does the federal government do in a situation like this? Our primary responsibility is to respond to the state when the state requests the president to declare a declaration. So we are responders to the requests of a state. We have here this evening 25 federal agencies that FEMA is responsible to coordinate along with the Red Cross who are meeting here at this time. In fact, I will leave this uh, interview to go there, Mr. Cobble. Now, uh, when you say you're waiting for California, I mean, uh, you know, the governor of California is in Europe. He's coming back. He'll be back tomorrow afternoon. I just had the lieutenant governor on who was trying to convey as much information uh, as he can. Is there a formal mechanism, a trigger that that has to be pulled before the federal government can step in? Obviously, we've already started moving by the response we have here tonight with our emergency support team on site and also the activation of the catastrophic disaster response group, those 25 federal agencies. So we're not waiting to respond. We're responding right now. The governor uh, and the state of California has one of the best response mechanisms in place and was tested in September in response 89 for an earthquake of this nature. We had 500 federal uh, uh, officials down there working with the state. So there's not going to be a problem with, the, with California asking the right questions. Right. Mr. Peterson, let me just interrupt you for one second to warn our affiliates that it should come as no surprise to you that tonight we're going to go beyond our allotted time as we continue to try to keep you up to date and bring you up to date on what's been happening with that earthquake in California. I'm talking to the Associate Director of FEMA, uh, Mr. Grant Peterson. Mr. Peterson, um, in, in terms of uh, immediate reaction. I mean, do you wait for the local authorities to do what they can to help, or uh, is there, for example, any consideration given to uh, sending federal troops out there to help, uh, or sending immediate infusions of money? I mean, just give me a sense of the steps that you take immediately. Okay, first off, we bring all the federal agencies together as we have right here. We begin to assess the damage. We're in communications with the Sacra Sacramento, California Emergency Management Community, which is in direct contract with their proper authorities. We're also in direct communications with our people on the Presidio, that's FEMA people, in conjunction with the 6th Army down there who has their emergency center up. 
Uh, we do wait for the trigger of the request from the state be, to respond to their needs. We are not the first responders. California will request what they need and we will look with internally with the resources of 25 federal agencies and respond immediately to those requests. We do have, Mr. Koppel, some pre-positioning aspects uh, such as our operation in Denver and Seattle is on alert and ready to put resources in as well as we're sending people right now from Denton, Texas as well to back up the Sacramento operation should they be needed. It looks like we have our facility coming back online in the Presidio and with the 6th Army's uh, cooperation and our people working conjunctly, jointly with them, we think we're ready right down there at this time, sir. Uh, one more question, Mr. Peterson, and then we'll be taking a break and, and going back to San Francisco to look at what's happening there. Uh, we know that in the wake of Hurricane Hugo, the Red Cross, for example, was badly uh, strapped for financial uh, for funds. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they spent something in the neighborhood of $40 million and only had 10. Um, how can the Red Cross at this point even help? Where is, it getting, where is it getting its resources? The Red Cross has been receiving funds, and that's a good point, and I'm sure the Red Cross will be, they are always Johnny on the spot, and uh, will continue to be, and we have provided some food air items for distribution with the Red Cross, but money is the issue that they probably will be asking for support. Money is not a primary issue at this time, Mr. Koppel, with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. As you know, we do have a $1.1 billion pool that is in place now for Hugo and can be used for other emergency declarations, sir. So we, uh, we do not have a strict money problem at this time. Mr. Peterson, I know you have a long night's work ahead of you. Thank you for joining us. Thank Good you. Good to be with us. Thank you, sir. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be going back once again live to San Francisco. To you what we know from where we know it. The U.S. Geological Survey places the epicenter of the quake in the Santa Cruz Mountain Range. That is uh, eight miles, uh, or about 60 miles, uh, southwest of San Francisco. Eight miles northeast of Santa Cruz and 20 miles south of San Jose. That is where the epicenter of the quake is said to occur. A Red Cross volunteer on the scene in Santa Cruz says there is severe damage in the downtown area there. That is a very popular beach resort. It is also the home of uh, Santa Cruz uh, University. The California Highway Patrol says six people have been killed in the collapse of part of the city's Garden Mall in Santa Cruz. Authorities tell CNN Highway 1 and Highway 17 into Santa Cruz are closed. We should quote presidential spokesman Marlon Fitzwater says the White House is being told the most serious quake damage has been sustained in the Santa Cruz area. Our latest information about San Jose now comes through ham radio operator John Worley. He's been told police are confirming six deaths in San Jose. That's about 50 miles south of San Francisco. He also hears San Jose is without power. Highway 17 out of the city of San Jose is blocked by mud and rock slides. In Marin and Sonoma counties, that's directly north of San Francisco, electricity, gas, and telephone service for some 750,000 people has effectively been wiped out. Folks in Marin have been told to shut off their gas lines. There's a strong smell of gas around town. A serious leak is feared. Officials from the sheriff's office in Napa County indicate there's some concern about gas leaks in that area, too. However, there are no reports of injuries or structural damage in Napa. The latest from Oakland, across the bay from San Francisco, a half-mile section of the upper deck of Interstate 880 has collapsed. That is an extremely heavily traveled road. That's on the approach to the Bay Bridge where that major collapse has occurred. Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy says there have been at least 40 fatalities on Highway 880 on the east side of the bay. But McCarthy adds grimly, the rubble is so bad they still don't have an accurate count of all the fatalities. The Embarcadero Freeway, which is an elevated double-decker roadway that runs along Oakland's waterfront, has been heavily damaged, and that, too, has been shut down. And as we said earlier, as these reports come in to CNN Center, we will bring you all the information as soon as we receive it. Patrick? 
Bob Serkin, thank you. Uh, as you say, it's a, it's a devastated area, the San Francisco Bay Area, Northern California. CNN's Charles Beerbauer is standing by now, and uh, we had talked not long ago with Governor George Duke Majin. The concern is what the governor is going to get from Washington to try to rebuild his state, which has been so badly damaged. Charles? Well, he'll get whatever he's needed and whatever's available, and that's the first priority is to find out just what the situation is. So President Bush has dispatched, dispatched excuse me, Secretary of Transportation Samuel Skinner to San Francisco to get a first-hand assessment. Secretary Skinner and several California congressmen who are traveling with them are at uh, Washington's National Airport due to leave just about any minute if they're not revving up the engines now. We did talk to Secretary Skinner, though, before he left. Our main concern uh, on behalf of the president and the administration and congressmen that are here and everybody else is to make sure that uh, the humane side of this issue, that uh, human life, is, everything is being done and that we are coordinating everything that can be done. We've got a major traffic facility out there, the bridge, uh, that uh, is, is very vital and that's very important. But we want to make sure that the human lives are being taken care of and that people, if they're homeless or they're in uh, any need of anything, that uh, our government uh, can and will respond on a coordinated basis and quickly. That's my mission, and as soon as I find out what's going on, I'll be reporting back to Go Governor Sununu and the President, and uh, that'll begin uh, early tomorrow morning. Thank you. So that's when we'll get the next word back here at the White House. They've pretty well shut down for the night. FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is providing information to the White House, keeping Chief of Staff uh, John Sununu apprised. Sununu, in turn, uh, briefing the president. He got what we were told was his last briefing for the night at about 10.45 uh, p.m. Eastern Time. FEMA has its command center at headquarters here in Washington, not at the White House. Uh, the president, uh, as I said, indicated he wants to assess the damages, find out what the needs are. In his words, the federal government will do everything that it possibly can. The president found out about the earthquake after he spoke to the Republican Governors Association here in Washington this evening. We chatted with him briefly as he came back to the White House. Uh, there are massive structural damages that we have seen. A lot of the interstate highways, those are built at least partially with federal funds. They'll need some federal funds to restore them, I would expect. Uh, Secretary Skinner uh, was also expected to travel with Marilyn Quayle, the wife of the vice president, uh, who has made disasters uh, a special concern of hers, the treatment of them, how people are handled. So she wanted to go along on this trip. Uh, we expect she'll be on that plane with the several congressmen. One of the congressmen, Congressman Don Edwards of California, said he would pull out all the stops to see to it that federal aid is provided to the Bay Area. Now, I should recall that in past circumstances, the Bush administration has been criticized for acting slowly in the Alaska oil spill and the South Carolina hurricane it would seem that the Bush White House wants to be seen and is acting quickly in this instance Charles Beerbauer CNN reporting live from the White House Charles Beerbauer in Washington thank you parts of the Bay Bridge connecting San Francisco and Oakland collapsed during the earthquake this dramatic footage we have to show you was taken by an amateur video camera operator who just happened to be shooting on the bridge when, when the quake hit as you can see, the section of the bridge caves in. Look at that car to the left of that pickup truck. It was the upper roadway on the double-deck bridge that gave way. Three cars uh, were left dangling between the two levels, and we do have one report uh, that one person on the bridge was killed. Uh, in contrast, the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, which was built in the 1930s, and there are those pictures again. Uh, the Golden Gate, uh, built in the 1930s, not reported damage. Uh, Claudia Gomez was on the bridge uh, when the quake hit, and we have uh, uh, words from her. We were on the bus. All of a sudden, everything came to a stop, and the bus just started shaking massively back and forth. Everything stopped, and then all of a sudden, everything started going, and again, everybody thought that things were normal, and then, like, maybe about two minutes later, everything came to a dead stop. People running in between the cars, running back to Treasure Island, screaming out, the bridge is collapsing, the bridge is collapsing. I think people were literally running for the, their lives. I, I was. The only thing I could think of was get back to land. I mean, it was like... You abandoned a, the vehicle and walked? <laughs> absolutely. No, ran. No, there was no walk. There was total panic on the bridge. Did you see the damage? Did you close enough? I ran to the side of the bridge where the bridge bends over and I saw, I think, some debris in the water. I can't be sure, but it looked like debris in the water. We had heard that people and cars had gone over the bridge and there were rescue tr crews trying to get to those people. Did you see anything like that? There was a massive traffic jam and rescue crews couldn't get to the center of the bridge and people came out, um, the rescue crews came out in bullhorns and just started directing people 
to stay on Treasure Island. Eyewitnesses, people on the bridge discussing uh, exactly what happened when the earthquake hit. Uh, Captain Michael French is at the Letterman Medical Center, and we want to find out from him uh, how many people have been brought in, what type of injuries. Can you hear me, Captain? Yes, sir, I can. Can you describe the scene at your medical facility? Well, sir, we have uh, initiated a mass casualty situation here, a program that uh, we practice uh, every six months, and uh, we've accepted up to ten casualties thus far. Uh, they've come from uh, around the area. Uh, we've received... Uh, helicopters from the U.S. Army, uh, U.S. Coast Guard's Naval Air Station at Alameda with casualties from the Bay Bridge area, and we have had uh, one uh, fatality on arrival. T the types of injuries that these people uh, are suffering? Sir, they're mostly crush injuries, broken bones. That's uh, primarily what we're seeing right now. And, of course, uh, good, a good section of uh, those freeways that have collapsed uh, uh, may well be trapping more people and so you're anticipating uh, how much of a how much of a siege here at your medical center we're really not sure sir we're really not sure of what the situation is out there there are very uh, very many hospitals within the San Francisco area and we're receiving uh, some of those casualties we're not sure how many will be coming to this uh, medical center how's your water uh, do you have electricity uh, yes sir we have emergency power that came on immediately as the main power went off uh, we're operating on that power we've had no problems uh, uh, due to lack of power as you know our, our phones are operating and sure. we're able to contact uh, our personnel uh, at their homes to ask them to come in and assist in the situation. How's your water supply? Water supply is fine, sir. That's, that's, uh, that is a, a fortunate thing under the yes, circumstances. Sir. All right, um, Captain uh, Michael French at the Letterman Army Medical Center. Um, good luck to you, sir. And, thank you very much, sir. And thank you. Bye-bye. Donna? And our coverage of the earthquake in San Francisco continues in just a minute. We'll be talking with a geophysicist and more eyewitnesses. Stay with us. For you, I certainly hope not. Unfortunately, the death toll around the Bay Area is very frightening. As many as 50 people, um, seven or eight in San Francisco. He is what you are watching is live coverage uh, of our colleagues out at KGO, the ABC station in San Francisco. Uh, they are talking over some of the videotapes. Some of that, I must say, I have now seen three or four times, and maybe you have too. And it wasn't until just a moment ago that I realized, for example, that what we had seen was not one stretch of highway that had buckled, but actually uh, had sandwiched together where the upper level of a highway had collapsed in on the lower level and the vehicles uh, between those two segments uh, just crushed. And th that's what you're looking at there right now. And when you see that from the side, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a, just an incredible concept. There you can see it now that the, the top part of the, the highway has collapsed onto the lower part of the highway. Uh, at one point earlier on, I heard someone talking about a stretch almost a mile long. Uh, and the estimates of 40 dead are now believed to be rather conservative estimates. It is an incredible thing that has happened here. I mean, what we are talking about is a situation um, where we give you the information as quickly as we can, and television, in some respects, is an incredible medium that shows you what happens very shortly afterwards, but in some instances, as in this case, for example, it's not until we get information from people on the scene that we can adequately describe to you the dimensions of what has happened. You're looking right now at a live shot from the Goodyear blimp, which of course was out there hovering over San Francisco for a much different purpose tonight, and that was the coverage of the uh, Oakland-San Francisco game of the, uh, the third game of the World Series, which never happened tonight. Uh, what you're looking at are the flickering lights of Oakland. Oakland was without electricity for much of uh, this late afternoon and early evening, but they now have the electricity working again as the camera pulls back. Uh, that black void that you see before you is actually the bay, uh, and uh, as the camera pans over now, you are going to be uh, gradually seeing San Francisco down below you, uh, and if all you're seeing is uh, a few scattering, uh, scattered lights, uh, that's all there is in San Francisco tonight. San Francisco is a city that is operating on backup power where there is any power at all. Uh, most of the city is without electricity, without power, 
uh, and uh, we heard uh, policemen on the street warning residents of San Francisco, get the water while you can, do whatever you have to do during the remaining daylight hours. It is, of course, now uh, in San Francisco, 9.15. Uh, it is dark there, uh, and they may very, very likely be without power for many hours, perhaps even some days. We go back now to our colleagues at KGO in San Francisco and join them for their live coverage uh, of this disaster that has hit the Bay Area today. A lot, of the, a lot of the stairs that they put in later crack right down the middle. I've never been in an earthquake before. It is the first time, and it's like the strangest feeling ever. I know I was out there in the left field area just walking around, and for five seconds I just lost all touch with, with, with really my balance. I, Did I didn't know where I was. Did no, you? I didn't look up. All of a sudden it hit and I was, whoa, where am I? And I'm, I still feel real sick. So, Worst one, eh? Uh, it's the only one, so it's got to be the worst one. I've never experienced that before. Strange feeling. Esther, where were you? Coming up the ramp. Into what did the like? That's probably the Terrible. worst. This is the third one I've been in. And the first two, he wasn't in town. I was all by myself. Aww. And I told, and then I would call him crying. He would tell me, you're such a crybaby. And I look at him, right? I was, yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Scary. I don't know how you're going to get home to Oakland. I don't know. Mateo. <laughs> My car has wings, so I can fly over there. <laughs> I was on the field, so I didn't feel a whole lot of it. I just saw, I mean, I could feel it a little bit. Once I saw the lights go out, first of all, and then uh, I heard the crowd, and I kind of looked around. I saw the, the sky boxes up there, and the windows really shaking, and... And then about the same time, I felt my feet underneath my feet, just like a wave. I mean, it's, it was one of those things that uh, we felt the one a couple years ago down in L.A. when we were down there. So, uh, you know, I was just, I feel fortunate we're, that I wasn't inside because the one in L.A. really shook me up. I mean, it did. So, um, you know, now it's just a matter of trying to get the family together. And Yeah, where's the family? Are well, we... My mom and dad and my wife are here. The, the kids are at a sitter, so we're trying to get through on the phone. But... Um, evidently all the phone lines are out and even the car phones are hard to get through on so how we're getting out of here now I don't know let's go right now to Bill Wiley with the CHP standing by live by telephone Bill go ahead yes hello uh, the Highway Patrol just wants to advise uh, Bay Area citizens to stay home tomorrow in the next few days uh, until you we let uh, essential services and repair crews uh, get out there and deal with the uh, problem Bill, what are you what are you hearing? I know the situation is very dangerous, but what are you hearing through your people out in the field? Uh, we are still in the early stages of assessing the roadway damages. Time uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm sure, in the next days to follow, we are going to be in for one of the biggest commute gridlocks ever seen uh, in years in the Bay Area. Absolutely. And that's why we would like people to please stay home. Let the essential services, uh, the life-saving crews, and the uh, repair crews out there to do their job. Uh, uh, if they could just stay home and call work, it would uh, lessen the problem. We're dealing with bridges and roadways that are closed indefinitely. We're dealing with uh, the remaining roadways that are not, they cannot build, they cannot uh, handle the flow of traffic. Uh, the 300,000 cars that travel the Bay Bridge daily are going to have to go somewhere else, Bill, as with the other bridges. Bill, there are people who absolutely have to get to work and can't do as you as your request. What is your advice to them? Uh, to stay home if they do not absolutely have to go to work. Uh, the problem is, is very critical. As I say, we're still in the early stages of damage assessment at this time, and uh, I can say stay home as, as, if they can. Okay, Bill. Bill Wiley with the California Highway Patrol asking people to please stay home. As you know, the Bay Bridge has a major portion of it which collapsed. So getting to work or getting anywhere around the Bay Area tomorrow, it, that route is going to be a fiasco. So the Highway Patrol asking you tonight, if you don't have to go to work, please call your bosses and try not to do that or to get around. Dan Levitt is standing by right now. Dan, you were out at Candlestick when this all happened, when the commissioner called off the game. That's right. Jay Vincent uh, to telling Channel 7 first uh, this evening that the game was called off. Game 3 of this World Series. Obviously, in light of this tra uh, tragedy, uh, I really don't see how they can honestly play this World Series here at this time. Although baseball, Major League Baseball, has not spoken on this matter yet and obviously will not until sometime tomorrow. Uh, in a way, we, we should all be very thankful in light of this uh, catastrophic event that this did not happen, say, in the fifth inning of a ball game at Candlestick Park in the dark. Uh, can you imagine the, 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 
the real tragedy that would have taken place out there at Candlestick Park had the place gone completely black uh, in light of what, it, what did take place. We talked with some of the ball players a little earlier, of course, Jose Canseco, Robbie Thompson, many others. They were all uh, shook up, as, as you can well imagine we all are, as you are. And uh, they have they was, uh, since left the ballpark a long time ago. Dan uh, Lovett talking about uh, precisely the problem that uh, would have been that much worse if indeed uh, this had occurred even an hour or two later. It was, of course, still daylight when the earthquake hit uh, on the West Coast. We have been, as you know, if you've been with us for a while now, piggybacking on uh, uh, the fine work of our affiliate out there in San Francisco, KGO, and what their camera people have been doing out in the scene. Some absolutely uh, incredible pictures, both of the Bay Bridge and of one of those ramps leading up to the Bay Bridge, where apparently some of the greatest loss of life has occurred. Joining us uh, in one instance by phone and in another instance uh, in our studio, uh, first of all, in our studio, Dr. James DeOrder, who is a clinical instructor of emergency medicine at Georgetown University, uh, is uh, with us in our Washington bureau. Dr. DeOrder was in Armenia. Uh, that was last year when the earthquake hit there in Soviet Armenia. Uh, and Kay Hutton, who is joining us by phone, is a seismologist at the California Institute of Technology, Pasadena. Uh, and I see that you are joining us uh, in, by video as well as audio. So, Dr. Hutton, maybe you would be good enough to tell us, first of all, um, what can you tell in terms of the range of this earthquake uh, and, and where it hit? What are the most severely impacted areas? Well, the damage, uh, from what I've heard on the news, seems to be mainly in the Bay Area, around San Francisco Bay, where the sediments are um, probably amplifying the shaking a bit. Uh, the earthquake itself was felt as far away as Los Angeles. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm finding it, I, I won't say amusing, but a little curious that all the experts I keep talking to all evening long keep telling me what they're hearing on the news. We are telling people as best we can what we see, what we witness, what reporters uh, are able to witness, and what officials are telling them. I'm just wondering, what is it at a time like this that a seismologist can do to sort of clarify what has happened? Well, what we can do at this point is record the data as best we can for future research. Uh, we here are actually spending most of our time answering questions uh, from the press because apparently uh, the seismographic offices in Berkeley and Menlo Park are not um, communicating very well. Well, rather than my asking dumb questions which you can't answer, uh, tell me what questions you can answer about this. What can you tell us about what's happened? Okay, well, what we know at this point is that the quake was uh, either 6.9 or 7, I've heard two preliminary estimates, uh, was probably on the San Andreas Fault in the Santa Cruz Mountains, about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz. And the impact, the impact will be felt how far away? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Uh, the quake would, well, if it had been under San Francisco instead of under the Santa Cruz Mountains, it probably would have been worse. What is it that we're looking at behind you there is on that roller? Is that, is that the, uh, the seismographic tracing? Okay, these are seismographic recordings in southern, from stations in Southern California. You can see here, this is the beginning of the large shock. So you can see it was writing um, for this instrument off scale for um, several minutes. Uh, and then you can see a number of aftershocks in here. Um, are any of the aftershocks still in progress? Um, we have had maybe a dozen or to two dozen earthquakes, big aftershocks big enough to feel down or to record down here. Um, they are certainly having many more up there, I'm sure. All right, Kay Hutton, thanks very much. We'll let you get back to your work. And now, uh, Dr. Diorta. Uh, I, I guess we have to do this inferentially. You were in Armenia following their earthquake. Uh, that clearly was of a far, far greater magnitude than what we're looking at here in San Francisco. But what are the immediate problems in the wake of an earthquake like this in terms of the kinds of injuries that hospitals in the Bay Area are going to be seeing uh, and uh, the likelihood of growing fatalities? What happens over the next 24, 48 hours in terms of what we will find out? I think the interesting thing is, Ted, that what you see first uh, in, in this situation is the evolving open-spaced mass casualty disaster, very different than a closed or a contained disaster in one single building. 
the first thing that gets knocked out is you're well aware of is communications and probably that's why to the television is so important I think that you all are able to send a lot of communications around uh, to help people out in terms of the actual medical problems unfortunately crush crushing in inside of a building or underneath a structure is what kills people first uh, after that point in time when people are extricated uh, out of the out of the rubble where they've been trapped um, our major concern is to get them into a hospital is to evaluate them for crush injuries and uh, to aggressively resuscitate them the longer these people are pinned and the longer they're held within a, a, a structure or trapped uh, the more problems they will develop later on, several days down the line, in what we call post-traumatic crush syndrome. And that is? What happens uh, is that when the muscles are, are crushed or severely injured, it liberates a certain substance which uh, is called myoglobin, and in the blood, uh, this circulates into the kidneys and clogs up the kidneys filtering system and causes something called renal failure or the kidneys begin to close down and then there's a, a serious uh, uh, sequela of something like that. On a very practical level now, uh, throughout most of the country, certainly in most cities and I would certainly assume in areas like Oakland and, and San Francisco, do hospitals have adequate uh, power backup? In other words, are they able to keep their operating rooms functioning? Are they able to keep all the lights on and the, and the heart-lung machines going and whatever else they need? Just about an hour before I came here to your studio, I was speaking with a Dr. Larry Bedard, who is the director of emergency medicine at Marin County Hospital. And he assured me that uh, things were progressing along, uh, along their normal disaster plan. Uh, they are very well equipped, uh, he felt, to handle this disaster of this magnitude. Uh, he, he, he described to me what he said was absolute terror for the first, uh, first hour or 40 minutes when no one knew exactly uh, what was going on. Uh, but as time is evolving now, uh, they feel pretty comfortable in, in, in dealing with the situation in their local region. All right, Dr. Diorda, we're very good of you to come in and join us this evening. What we're going to do now is go back out to KGO in San Francisco uh, and follow along with some of their coverage of what's happening on the scene. The death toll is at least 50, and we're, we're only giving you the figure because we want you to understand the severity of the quake. It, we, we know, we are certain now, because of damage, that it's going to go much higher than this. This is one of the reasons why. Uh, this is uh, the Marina District in San Francisco, and the kind of thing that happens when, as we understand it, a natural gas explosion occurs because of a leak. And this is still burning tonight at this hour. In fact, has been burning since shortly after the fire began. This is the other major area of concern, and we understand now at least 40 to 50 people died in a one mile long collapse of the 880 freeway the so-called uh, uh, Cypress area uh, what, what happened here simply was that the top section of the freeway collapsed onto the bottom uh, literally sandwiching the people uh, driving in rush hour traffic and uh, you can see the fires created from certain of those vehicles along that line and the damage just terribly severe there and at least 40 people are dead there now to the bridge and this was the first sign this afternoon as we were out at candlestick and we finally got back on the air Anna and I had talked to you briefly and to Cheryl and this was the first sign we had of the severity of the damage here this is a 50 foot to 40 foot section of the Bay Bridge that is uh, of course the uh, westbound lanes and it collapsed onto the uh, the lower section of the bridge the uh, the airport structure of course is the thing that we've been updating you about and right now we want to go to Frank Crocker who's at San Francisco International Frank Anna what you're looking at right now now is the main control tower above the international building at San Francisco International Airport. You can see that the temporary lighting has been set up. We are told that the damage is, is very minor in the tower area, that it is functional. They had to put in temporary lighting. They lost one pane of glass when the main tembler hit around 5 o'clock. No one was injured up there. They are operational, but the airport remains closed. As you can see, it's a ghost town up here. We're on the departure level. We are finally allowed up here. There are uh, garbage trucks. And, and trash hauling trucks that have moved up, and I'm going to show you why. We'll, we're going to take a walk inside the terminal here and show you exactly what happened out here. 
as you can see, it looks uh, pretty much like a war zone. Ron, if you can pan down here. This is all the uh, drop ceiling in the new International Terminal. It's that uh, fibrous, like, cardboard substance. It's pretty lightweight. So uh, this all came down in, in the quake. You can look up uh, at the ceiling, Ron, where you can see where the, the false ceiling had dropped. They've had uh, major water leaks in here. Uh, all right, we are going to come right back to uh, the live reporting from KGO, but standing by now by telephone in Frankfurt, West Germany, is the governor of California, Governor Duke Majin. Uh, governor, good morning to you. It's uh, obviously been a, a terrible day for your state. Uh, I wonder if you could just bring me up to date on what you know and when you're going to be coming back and what's going to be happening tomorrow. Yes, Ted. Uh, I'm in Frankfurt because we just opened a brand new uh, trade and investment office here in Frankfurt today, or last night it uh, was, and then about uh, 1 a.m. this morning I was contacted by our office about the uh, earthquake. And I've been up all night uh, receiving reports and also watching reports on uh, CNN uh, here. And it's about, uh, it's after 5 o'clock in the morning here now. And uh, I've made arrangements to uh, fly home immediately. And, and uh, the reports that we're getting, uh, the, the worst thing that I've heard so far uh, from our office is that uh, uh, they believe that at least 60 people uh, have lost their lives uh, that we know of at, up to this point. And uh, obviously, you've you've seen all of the uh, reports. Uh, the devastation is just uh, horrible, and um, uh, we're just you know shocked by it. But on the other hand, uh, all of the emergency agencies uh, have done a lot of planning, a lot of training, a lot of practicing and coordinating together. And and I'm very confident that they are uh, working together, both the federal and the local, as well as the state agencies. Now, Governor, uh, the latest casualty report that was just handed to me is that there are now reports of 69 dead uh, yeah. and that in that one Oakland freeway collapse, and in fact we're looking at video of that collapse right now, uh, that as many as 60 people may have died in that one collapse alone. When you, yes, talk, about, when you talk about the, uh, the preparations that are made, in one sense, you can never prepare for this kind of thing, but uh, give, give us an idea of, of what you mean by the preparations that have been made. Well, the, the uh, things that the emergency services uh, have to do and try to do immediately, of course, is to uh, reach people who are injured and try to get them as quickly as possible uh, where they can receive some medical services. And the planning is that uh, you know that you're going to lose some power, you know that you're going to have... Uh, access is uh, cut off and you have to try to anticipate that and to uh, use alternative means and so through the cooperation through the training uh, all of the emergency uh, services uh, do plan for that and try the best they can under these uh, circumstances you know you're going to have uh, problems with gas leakage and you're going to lose some power and you're going to lose some communications and so uh, they, they make every effort to try try to anticipate that, and that's what uh, the benefit is uh, from having uh, exercises and, and training and planning procedures. Governor Duke Majin, uh, inevitably, when something even remotely like this happens, people begin to raise questions again about the, the propriety uh, of allowing people to build homes and to build businesses along the San Andreas Fault, uh, because in point of fact, we keep hearing predictions that sooner or later, there's going to be the big one. I don't frankly think that this one was it, as bad as it is. Uh, does that call for, for a reevaluation of what really is in the best interests of people who have built their homes and, and sort of mortgaged their lives along that particular area? Because it seems inevitable that this kind of thing is going to keep on happening, doesn't it? Well, I don't, well, I don't think that you're going to find uh, much destruction of homes that have been built uh, using earthquake standards that have been established in our state. Uh, the one thing that does surprise me from the report on this earthquake is the, the failure of some of the uh, highways and roads and bridges. Uh, I've always been under the impression that those have been uh, constructed uh, to withstand these earthquakes. And so uh, this is something that I think that we very definitely uh, have to look into immediately and determine why uh, they, they did not uh, hold up. But, uh, you know, you've got many, many major buildings in downtown San Francisco that have withstood this. I think the ones that uh, have fallen and uh, the ones where you've got the destruction are the older buildings that were built before earthquake standards were established. And then, of course, as a result of the gas 
explosions and then the fire uh, that's causing additional destruction but as far as the average uh, individual home or apartment house uh, that is built even though it's along the earthquake fault if it's built in accordance with earthquake uh, building standards I, I think that those buildings are able to withstand a shake of uh, this size we are looking right now at some videotape that was shot earlier governor and we're looking at uh, really a horrendous inferno that's taking place in the marina section of of San Francisco and this yeah. I'm told is an area where uh, actually very elegant new homes have been built on reclaimed land um, one would have thought that those that those homes in particular would be more earthquake resistant but I gather that the fire we're looking at for example uh, was caused by a rupture in the in the gas lines now there's nothing doesn't matter how securely you build a home if there are ruptures in the gas lines and that causes a fire the home goes right that, that's right. And uh, uh, again, uh, the only things that I, I, I believe that uh, could or should be done is obviously uh, the way in which those gas lines are installed and whether or not they can be installed in such a way as to uh, withstand uh, the severe uh, shocks uh, that come from the earth uh, shaking like that. Is that possible? I mean, you're talking about... I don't, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know the uh, technical answer to that. Governor Duke Majin, I've I just got more information that Army troops and National Guards have been called in to deal with possible looting in San Francisco. Are you aware of that, or were they in fact called in at your orders? Well, uh, our Lieutenant Governor is there, and uh, he may have done that. I'm not personally aware of that, but uh, if, if in fact there has been uh, any activity like that, criminal activity, uh, certainly uh, that's a wise move uh, to have uh, law enforcement or some of our National Guard units uh, respond. But here again, um, I'm sure that as a result of uh, many, many years uh, and uh, up-to-date uh, planning and coordination that uh, these types of things uh, are anticipated. And uh, it's unfortunate when it happens, but uh, they are anticipated. They've happened in the past whenever there's been disasters, and so uh, the units are ready to respond in such situations. All right, Governor Duke Majin, I know it's been uh, a long night for you already, and uh, you're going to be flying back when? You'll be back in California? Tomorrow afternoon? Well, I'm, I'm leaving uh, Frankfurt. Uh, the first plane that I can get out of here is uh, 10 o'clock uh, our time. I uh, believe that I'll be arriving there sometime. I think it will be around uh, 1 o'clock uh, California time. So, um, and uh, we can't fly into San Francisco or Oakland, so we'll have to fly into Los Angeles, and then I'll be met by a, a military uh, plane and, and flown up to the, uh, the Bay Area. All right, Governor Duke Majin, again, I, I, I know it's been a sleepless night for you, and um, I'm sorry that uh, well, all of this has happened. Uh, as, as, the, as the head of the state, uh, I, I know the rest of America wants to extend to all Californians their, their concern for what has happened, what is happening, and I'm sure you'll see once again that Americans, uh, as in times of all crisis, will respond uh, in a very generous and, and thoughtful fashion, and, you know, come on home soon. Well, thank you very much. Governor Duke Majin, thank you. It's been, of course, a, uh, a very long evening, and uh, events are still unfolding as we have tried to keep you up to date all evening long. Uh, just in the event that uh, some of you have tuned in late, let me point out to you that uh, all of this began at uh, 5.04 Pacific time, and we first became aware of it. Uh, when quite literally the opening of the third game of the World Series uh, was interrupted when the electricity, the power went out. Uh, that was caused by an earthquake uh, whose epicenter uh, is apparently down in the uh, San Jose Santa Cruz area, but the, uh, the shock uh, was felt uh, quite severely. Uh, in the Bay Area of Oakland, of San Francisco, Berkeley, uh, Northern California has been badly hit by this earthquake, which measured 6.9 to 7.0 on the Richter scale. Uh, we are now beginning to hear of fatalities, 60, 70 people dead, uh, and it seems almost certain that those are only preliminary reports. Uh, as this story develops. ABC News will be here, of course, to keep you up to date uh, on late developments in the earthquake in San Francisco. And as developments warrant throughout the night, we will be with you with detailed reports. There will be reports, of course, on World News This Morning and Good Morning America, and a complete wrap-up on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings.
That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. This has been a presentation of ABC News, where more Americans get their news than from any other source. October unsung American Cynthia Williams helping a teenager realize her dreams. I think a mentor is very important in a, in a young person's life. A vice president in real estate finance, Cynthia shares her experiences with a high school senior. There is really a special kind of joy in sharing in a young person's struggles and her successes and her triumphs. It's one of the most rewarding things that I've done in my life. To volunteer to help young people in your community, call this number. Everyone's jumping for joy. Friday's almost here. Hello. With Full House and a brand new family. And he got straight A's. Six A's? Five bucks a piece? You owe me 40 bucks, Dad. Family Matters all Friday. On TV 13, meteorologist Bill Peterson, we will have rain, drizzle, and fog tonight. Not a very pleasant evening as temperatures drop into the 30s. Uh, not all that much better tomorrow with temperatures only in the 40s. We'll see clouds and again some showers. Feel the magic as you drive in a car that makes you know you're alive. Feel the magic, Chrysler's in the day after the big Northern California earthquake, the San Francisco Bay Area, the digging out continues, and so does the counting of the dead. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening from San Francisco. This is the Marina District neighborhood. It was the hardest hit residential area in San Francisco. It is believed that between three and five people died in that apartment house right back there. Although I must tell you, most of the damage in San Francisco has been confined to this area, which is about four square miles altogether. I made a helicopter tour today of the entire Bay Area, and the greatest damage was right here on the Oakland Bay Bridge and, of course, on Interstate 880. Yet, more than 272 people are believed to have died. The death toll could go over 300 before we're all through. Damage, more than $1 billion. Yet tonight, some good news as well. San Francisco airports are open, although congestion, we're told, is very heavy. And in the city of San Francisco and in many of the outlying communities, service is being restored. They expect to have full power in San Francisco before the end of this day. It was a devastating earthquake nonetheless, 7.0 on the Richter scale. This is the full range of its effects. It reached all the way into Nevada, as far south as Southern California. The epicenter was in the Santa Cruz area. The San Francisco Bay Area, of course, with its larger concentration of people, suffered the most. And the single greatest hit occurred on the Oakland Bay Bridge in approach to Interstate 880. A long section of that collapsed during the peak of the rush hour, and several hundred people were probably killed. NBC's George Lewis is standing by there right now. George, I know that the rescue operations continue, and it is difficult to know just how many people were killed. What are they saying now about the estimated death toll? Right now, Tom, they have 10 confirmed dead. This was not supposed to happen. California's bridges and, earth and uh, freeway abutments are reinforced to make them earthquake resistant, but this time it failed. Perhaps as many as 150 to 250 cars and their occupants were crushed when the top deck of the freeway collapsed onto a lower deck. It happened at the worst possible time, evening rush hour. This morning, firemen hoisted their ladders up to the structure looking for victims. Paramedics with specially trained dogs searched for signs of life and found none. Jackhammers were called in to begin the task of breaking up the rubble. It will be some time before the exact death toll is known. The number of missing persons at this time reported to Oakland is 86. Dan Ruby waits by the freeway, his son one of the missing. And uh, I've been here since 6 this morning because I couldn't sleep. So I figured rather than stay up and walk around like a zombie, I just come down here and see if I could do something. Yesterday afternoon, just after the collapse, the scene was chaos. Bystanders rushed in to help rescue the victims, risking their own lives in the process. I seen the freeway drop, started dropping you know, like dominoes, you know? I seen it just start dropping like layers, you know? People were panicking. When we first went in, it was cars that were on fire and smoking. 
uh, dust all over the place uh, and people saying, help me, help me. People were dead all around you. It was just uh, uh, too uh, traumatic and uh, awesome of an, uh, an experience to uh, relate to anyone right now. The collapsed freeway section is east of the San Francisco Bay Bridge, connecting the bridge to downtown Oakland. A section of the bridge itself caved in during the quake, tossing cars and people into the bay, crushing others. This home video shows what it was like atop the bridge as the quake hit, a moment of sheer terror. Authorities say it will be at least three weeks before the bridge reopens, completely disrupting life for thousands of Bay Area commuters. And late this afternoon, Transportation Secretary Samuel Skinner said it would probably be a year and a half before this section of freeway is reopened. Meanwhile, state officials have promised a thorough investigation of why it collapsed. Tom? George, I think that there are, what, more than 300,000 people who commute from East Oakland into the San Francisco area every day. They're going to have to have some means of getting to work. Are there any alternative plans at this time? They're talking about reinforcing BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit System, the subway that goes under the bay. Apparently, it was not heavily damaged by the quake. Uh, they're hoping to lay on extra trains throughout the day and night. They're talking about going to a 24-hour schedule, but it's still going to mean a major disruption for the people who live here. They're going to have to have the San Francisco equivalent of Dunkirk with a lot of boats, perhaps, as well. Well, they've got ferry boats now lined up to uh, take people back and forth across the bay, hearkening back to the, the days before the Bay Bridge and, and before the BART system. All right, thank you very much, George Lewis, tonight. In Oakland, San Francisco, of course, is the heart of the Bay Area, and this is a city that was leveled by a great earthquake and fires in 1906. This time, it came through in much better condition, but this neighborhood, it's called the Marina District, was hard hit. It is built on a floodplain hard by the Golden Gate Bridge and the Presidio, for those of you who are familiar with the San Francisco area. And these are elegant homes, many of them built more than 60 years ago. We get a report tonight on what's been going on in San Francisco from NBC's Don Oliver. Most of San Francisco remained undamaged after the quake, but power was still out in the downtown area today. Without signals, traffic was snarled. One area of the city was hit hard. The marina, not far from the Golden Gate Bridge. Thousands of curious poured into the neighborhood to stare at the warped and twisted buildings. Yeah, but I got an engine left. And watch firemen continue to pour water on the remains of an apartment building and two homes. Most of San Francisco, the hilly part, is built on solid rock. But this was once part of San Francisco Bay. It's all reclaimed land. The quake turned it into a bowl of jello, and four-story buildings were shook to the ground. The fires were believed to have resulted from broken natural gas lines. During the night, rescue workers looked for survivors in the damaged buildings and guarded against looters. Today, Mayor Art Agnos said the citizens of San Francisco were well-behaved. The crime was way below average. Uh, the bookings were down, the arrests were down. Today, the grim search for bodies began. They used chainsaws to attempt to clear away the debris, but finally gave up, saying the job was too dangerous. They know that the bodies of two people are in this building, but firemen are reluctant to go after them. This was a four-story building. There's only two stories above the ground now. How are you going to get at them? And uh, we can't risk sending a crew in if this is going to topple over. Vice President Quayle toured the area by helicopter and then surveyed the marina damage from the ground. He promised quick federal assistance. Residents were warned not to enter buildings in the marina until they are judged to be safe. Some took great chances anyway in order to salvage their belongings. Everyone is concerned about a big aftershock knocking damaged buildings to the ground. Please use the sidewalk so we can get emergency vehicles into this area. Despite the warnings, the crowds continued to pour into the marina to see for themselves what the second worst earthquake in the nation's history had done to the city by the bay. Don Oliver, NBC News, San Francisco. Altogether, damage was scattered over a 100-mile area of the San Francisco Bay. Santa Cruz, which is right on the Pacific Ocean, about 75 miles south of here near Monterey and Carmel, was the epicenter. And NBC's Roger O'Neill is there tonight. The earthquake moved down Pacific Avenue in Santa Cruz with a vengeance. Most of the 60 stores in the six-block-long Garden Mall were destroyed. 
two people were killed there. We are in for a long-term rebuilding project in this community, both residentially and commercially. We need to hang together and we're going to do that. The oceanfront community may not get its electricity back for three days. The water supply is contaminated and the sewers aren't working. Only a handful of stores were open today. Residents spent hours waiting in line to buy bottled water and bread. Only one customer at a time was served. Fluid hot dogs, Pepsi, six-pack root beer, bread chips. Earthen Dam Reservoirs, though, in the mountains above the town, held. It was the only good news Santa Cruz had. Uh, I don't know if this isn't the big one. Uh, I don't know what would be left of this town if we got anything bigger than what we had. The National Guard was activated to help police patrol the streets. County officials said damages here, where the earthquake started, would exceed $500 million. Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Santa Cruz. California has six nuclear power plants altogether, none of them damaged by the earthquake. Rancho Seco, which is near Sacramento, just north of here, and Diablo, just south of here, are open and doing business. The federal government is deeply involved in the emergency rescue operation going on here. President Bush has declared seven counties in Northern California federal disaster areas. NBC's Robert Hager in Washington has been following that part of the story. In Washington, an army of federal and private workers began organizing a huge relief effort. President Bush, who will visit the scene late this week, grabbed a phone himself at one point. Jeff, is the president. How is it doing out there? What are you, are you getting a lot of requests for emergency medical service? The Red Cross is offering nurses, medicine, blood, and setting up shelters. The U.S. military is standing by to help clear debris if needed. The Agriculture Department is making surplus food available. And FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, will take applications for financial help, grants of up to $10,000 to hard-hit individuals, along with money for temporary housing and to repair homes, highways, and bridges. FEMA's Grant Peterson on his workers' efforts so far. And I'm proud of what they have done under the most disastrous, compounding, continual catastrophic events to hit the United States in a century. Peterson refers to twin disasters, Hurricane Hugo first, now the earthquake, guaranteed to cost the U.S. government well over the $1.1 billion allocated so far. And the earthquake alone may cost insurance companies another $1 billion, according to industry sources. FEMA says it'll set up claim offices for people in California within several days and promise to act on requests in about a week. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. It is also worth noting that in recent years, federal money for removing earthquake hazards has been significantly reduced. In a moment, we'll come back with the story of the Earthquake World Series. What happens now? Back in a moment. Move the World Series into second place. Bay Fever World Series between the A's of Oakland and the Giants of San Francisco. The earthquake struck last night at Candlestick Park during pre-game ceremonies. That game has been officially postponed today. Baseball Commissioner Faye Vincent is deciding what to do next. He did say, however, that at this time, baseball is not a top priority. We get more on the baseball story tonight from NBC's Bob Jamison. The earthquake hit Candlestick when most of the 60,000 fans were in their seats for the pre-game ceremonies. There was an immediate power failure and an abrupt end to television transmission. The huge stadium rocked and girders bent, but there was no panic, not even in the upper reaches of the ballpark. When the tremor ended, most fans and ball players sat or stood, stunned by the suddenness and force of the shock. I've lived here all my life and it never scared me in an earthquake. That was the first one that scared me. I'm just a little shook up by the whole thing, you know. There was an orderly exit, some fans carrying chunks of concrete shaken loose by the quake. The quake also damaged Oakland's Coliseum, raising the prospect that neither ballpark would be safe for fans. Baseball officials immediately began exploring an unprecedented move of the series from its home ballparks to a neutral city. But Commissioner Faye Vincent, in a hotel meeting room illuminated by candles, said baseball officials were not ready to take that step. We made the decision not to play tonight. That's the only decision we made. And Vincent said the demands of the Bay Area's response to the tragedy would play as important a role in his final decision as the condition of the ballparks. We do not want to put baseball ahead of other priorities that deserve uh, attention. 
At Vincent's direction, structural engineers made extensive examinations of both ballparks today. And some in baseball hope that those tests show the series could still be played here, that its resumption might be an important step in the Bay Area's recovery. Bob Jamison, NBC News, San Francisco. Civic pride does die hard when I suggested to one San Francisco that maybe they could move the World Series to a neutral site like Dodger Stadium. She said to me, Los Angeles, are you kidding? No way. On Wall Street today, there was some selling off of insurance companies as a result of the earthquake, but it was only a ripple and the Dow ended up closing higher. <laughs> Muffins have more fiber than almost anything. It's catastrophic. This is exactly the type of earthquake that we've been expecting to occur in the San Francisco area. Uh, last year there were reports put out that there was a 30% chance within the next uh, 10 to 30 years or so that this type of earthquake would occur in the, in the Bay Area. The portion of the San Andreas Fault that caused yesterday's quake is to the south of the region responsible for the 1906 disaster. Faults appear underground in places where huge sections of the earth, called plates, push together. As the plates move slowly over many years, pressure builds up until, like yesterday, it is released suddenly. The scientists expect aftershocks for many days, but in the long term, they say, the danger from that portion of that fault is lessened. Researchers point out that much of the Bay Area is landfill where there used to be water, and that is where the worst damage occurred. When the quake struck bedrock, it jerked sharply, but caused little damage. But the landfill, which is soft, rolled in waves, so damage was more severe. Scientists say that the next catastrophic earthquake they expect will strike not in the Bay Area, but in Southern California. I believe that we're going to have to uh, take very seriously the, uh, the possibility of and the probability of earthquakes in other parts of California. The scientists expect that earthquake will cause massive damage. Robert Bazell, NBC News. When the earthquake struck in Armenia, more than 25,000 people were killed there, of course, and the United States offered and delivered assistance. Well, today, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev offered the assistance of the Soviet Union to the people of Northern California. There was also an offer of assistance from Japan, which has had a lot of experience with earthquakes, of course, and at the same time, Japan has a large cultural and financial investment in this area. We'll be back with more after this. Sunsweet's been up to something remarkably fresh. A reclosable canister. So, Sunsweet pitted prunes stay fresh and moist. That is, for as long as they stay around. Only one prune tastes Sunsweet. Dental wears. It's the fresh mouth with fresh news. New super strength collagen now controls tartar for a better clean and freshens up dentures with a minty mouthwash ingredient. Try new collagen green. A better mouth freshening clean. Ah. For a change of mood, change to Philips soft tone pastel light bulbs. I'm in the mood for love. Simply because you're near me. Funny, but when you're near me, I'm in the mood for love. Make everything seem more beautiful with new soft tone pastels. It's time to change your bulb to Philips. Even the worst arthritis sufferers don't have to wake up stiff and sore because your doctor can help you find relief from the morning pain and stiffness that are often early signs of arthritis. Go off to see your doctor today and get a kick out of getting up in the morning. Pfizer, wake up to good mornings. Stay alive, stay alive. With 30 varieties of rice aroni, you can serve one every night for a month and never have the same one twice. I'm staying alive. Think about it. Your telephone is really a payphone. But now you can pay less. With MCI's new prime time, this 26-minute call at 8 p.m. from Chicago to Miami costs 32% less. MCI's new prime time. Sign up now. 
In other news tonight, an event in East Germany that is somewhat lower on the political seismic scale, the resignation of Eric Honecker as that country's communist leader. It was expected, but it does represent a profound change nonetheless. NBC's Arthur Kent tonight in East Germany. An active communist from the age of eight, Eric Honecker left power today as the symbol of all that is wrong in East Germany. It was Honecker who supervised building of the Berlin Wall. Honecker who resisted Gorbachev's perestroika and whose resignation was demanded by angry East Germans in this month's pro-reform demonstrations. Reformers welcome his departure, but complain that his replacement, Egon Krenz, is no improvement. Krenz said tonight East Germany can no longer resist Gorbachev-style reforms, but by reputation he's a hardliner reluctant to change. There will be modifications, slices of reform, if you will, that is always very well calculated. At reform rallies like this one last night in Dresden, Krenz and top party members are declared unacceptable to lead reform. Here, city authorities have tried to silence protests by talking with citizen groups. But the message from the people of Dresden is clear. We will wait peacefully for change, but we will not wait forever. So unless Egon Krenz, the hardliner, becomes an overnight convert to reform, East Germany's political crisis could deepen, not fade away. Arthur Kent, NBC News, Dresden, East Germany. On the California coast, an earthquake on the Florida coast, the successful launch of the shuttle Atlantis today. We have ignition and liftoff of Atlantis and the Galileo spacecraft bound for Jupiter. Atlantis thundered into orbit with the nuclear-powered Galileo on board. Galileo will be released this evening for its six-year journey to Jupiter. Clear skies let cameras on the ground get dramatic pictures of the shuttle separation from its booster rockets. The shuttle is scheduled to return to Earth next Monday. And we'll return to San Francisco with the story of the city's unique residents in just a moment. You've got hemorrhoids walking is hard, sitting worse, Anusol has an anesthetic for the pain and itch of hemorrhoids, Prep H doesn't, Anusol has an anesthetic to take the hurt out of hemorrhoids. To the average car this could be a dangerous body of water, even though it's only an inch deep. That's why you should drive the new four wheel drive Subaru Legacy, the latest in foul weather gear. Honey, why are you still eating cornflakes? Because I always eat cornflakes. That's because you haven't thought about these. Post oat flakes? Mm -hmm. They're light, they're crispy, they taste great. Mm. And post oat flakes give you something cornflakes can't give you. And what's that? Oats. Oats? The post oat flakes are a significant source of oat bran. For oat nutrition, you can't get from cornflakes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you think? I think I'll always eat post oat flakes. <laughs> post oat flakes. Oat nutrition you can't get from cornflakes. Give up hot chocolate just because I started wearing dentures? Uh-uh! Heat-resistant fix -a dent spreads evenly to keep on fixing loose spots, no matter how often it gets hot. Scab! fix -a dent and forget it. I eat nutritious meals with plenty of fruit and vegetables, so how come I'm the one with painful gas? Surprise! Foods high in nutrition are often high in gas, but Gas-X gets rid of the gas so you feel better fast. Eat right and feel right with Gas-X. Two views of San Francisco tonight. This residential area closed off because of earthquake damage. And at the end of the street, Golden Gate Bridge. The risk and reward of living in this beautiful city. A city that is very difficult to leave even after an earthquake. Here is NBC's Bob Dotson. 1801 Beach Street looks like a piece from a child's board game that ended angrily. Police lines warned neighbors not to risk their lives. But Aideen Murphy couldn't get home last night. All she has in the world was in her apartment, four flights up these rickety stairs. Well, I lived through the Battle of Britain in London. She passed Barbara Stinn, who lives on the second floor. Barbara retired here from Cleveland just last month to be near her son, Brad. How did you convince them to come here? Great weather, easy walking distance, no problems. I like. 
Brad Stan crosses the Bay Bridge every day at 5. Stay here and watch the stuff. He left early yesterday to go to the series. Missed the bridge's collapse by eight minutes. We're okay. Remarkably, no one was injured here. It is harder to be brave the day after, after reason returns and the sun reveals the odds. But Aideen pressed on. An earthquake is different from other disasters. No warning, no wind, no rain. Just 15 seconds of terror that snatches the rug from under your life. Oh, I'd like to help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the biggest piece of your life sits cracked in the street, you search for something the shifting earth did not touch. It made it. I'm sorry. Aideen bought $2,000 worth of Wedgwood China last week. Oh, wow, it's okay. She invited us back for tea someday. She says she'll stay in San Francisco. Bob Dotson, NBC News, in the tilted house on Beach Street. Everyone feels a claim on San Francisco, even people who have never visited this city. After all, its transcendent beauty and style makes us all proud, whatever our hometown. And I can tell you as well that we should be doubly proud tonight given the conduct of San Franciscans and people throughout the Bay Area in the face of this tragedy and major disruption of their lives. Can you believe this? In intersections, no traffic lights, and yet calmness prevails. Courtesy is the word of the day. I don't know what it's like where you live, but in New York City, not a chance. Tonight at 10, 9 central time, we'll have a special report. The earthquake aftershock. I'll see you then. For now, I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News in San Francisco. Thank you for joining us.